In this section, I will teach you how to use the for loop statement in Java in its most basic form. In programming, loops are used to repeat a block of code many times, typically for each value in given range. For example, we can write a for loop which increases the value of a variable x from 1 to 50 and prints the value of x at each step. Let's see how to do this in action and then practice with the hands-on exercises which I have prepared for homework. So let's go ahead with the whoops. The whoops are important construction in programming because they are allowed to repeat something many times, which is something we do in our life also. For example, we uh, go many times to the shop or we constantly every day repeat going to our job place, for example. So this is another example. We have um, a set of dishes and we want to put uh, this, this place, a set of plates. We want to put these plates in the dishwasher machine. So this is a repeating action. We take some dish, uh, some plates and we put that, them in a dishwasher machine. We take another piece of several plates and we put them in the Dish, dishwasher machine. We take more more plates and we put them in the dishwasher machine. So this is a repeating action. In programming we have many times uh, when we need to repeat something several uh, number of executions. For example, until the uh, last uh, plate is, is reached Please take a plate and put it in the dishwasher machine, for example. So we have many such situations and they are modeled and implemented with whoops in programming and with some repeating actions in the real world. So it's time to go and uh, tell you a little bit more about whoops and to show you the for loop in Java, which is a powerful control flow statement for repeating a piece of code several times. It looks like this, for, and we say, uh, please assign int to be a starting, starting from i, repeat until i is still not reached the value of 10, and say e plus equal to one, or e plus plus. So increment i with one here and print i which will print 1 and print i multiplied by 1 which will print 1 at the next iteration it will print 2 and 4 at the next iteration it will print 3 and 9 etc so this is how this works this is called the initialization uh, part of the for loop initial value uh, where we declare and assign uh, some the so-called loop variable. This is the condition um, part of the for loop. This is the so-called step far part of the for loop. And this is the so-called loop port. So in loops, we have a loop variable, variable which changes its value through the loop, over the loop, inside the loop. The loop stops when its loop condition it's not matched and the, after the end of each loop the step is applied so it moves from one loop step or one iteration to the to the next one i'll show you this in practice because it's quite important so we can say for int i starts from five for example until i is less than 10 I will increment i plus one, i plus plus, i by one, and I'll print the number i. See what will happen. I'll start this program here, and it will print the numbers from five to ten. These are the numbers: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can print them like this without a new line, and it will be something like this one. I can also print a space after each number and I'll print them on the same line, multiple 
from 5 to 10 on the same one. Uh, but I can start from 0 until 9. Start with 0 until 9 is reached. If until the value of the loop variable is less than 10. And because it's integer, the biggest number less than 10 will be 9. So this is how this work will work. It's from 0 to 9. Okay. Uh, I can also start from 10 until i is bigger than 0. And I will decrement this i from 10 to 1. This is a loop from 10 to 1. Down, downstairs, down. <laughs> it's a backward direction loop. Okay, so I can also say it's double A is 2 while I is less than this 124. I is equals to I multiplied by 2. So it will stop from 2 until this and it will be increased 2 times at each iteration. So it will be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 until 124. Okay? It will be... It's better to be int. This is how this works. It works very, very well. Okay, so, but the general most common way to use for is to say for, press tab and say int i is 1, i is less than an or equal to 5, i plus plus. So, this way we print the numbers as out from 1 to 5. And we can also print hello after that. So we have a several comments here. And all these comments are executed as a loop watch. It's one hello, two hello, three hello, until five hello. If I put only this, like in if, the loop body will be only this. If I don't have the curly brackets and this will be after the loop so I'll have the numbers from 1 to 5 followed by hello this is the result okay so but this is the typical way to implement for we have for we can use even this template for i and it's it's from 1 to for example from 0 to 9 or I always prefer to have I less than or equal to 10. So now I have from 1 to 10 and I print I. This is how this works. Let me check whether this works. Yes, this works very well. So this is how the loop works. It starts from 4. It always has these brackets. And it has three parts. The first part, semicolon, second part, semicolon, and the third part. The first initialize the loop variable. The second uh, specifies the loop exit condition. And the third one specifies how we reach from one step to another. How the loop variable changes uh, after each iteration. Okay, so this is the loop body which can consist of single oper single statement or multiple statements uh, which should be in these curly brackets if they are multiple. Okay, so the for loop allows the code to be executed repeatedly while certain condition is true and it consists of initialization, condition, step and loop body. So the initialization initializes the loop variable it might declare or just initialize uh, something. For example, if this is declared, I can here just initialize it. It will work 
the same way but usually we declare and initialize at the same one inside the loop this variable and this variable will not be available after the loop do you see it's it's invisible here why because it's declared here inside the loop so it's available here but it's not available here the scope is limited inside the loop of this variable i so this is the recommended way to use loops uh, so the initialization usually declares the variables and gives to this variable an initial value after that we have condition something like until while it's true that i is not reach 10 execute something and the step updates the loop variable after each iteration after the loop body this uh, is executed after so if we have one two three here in the loop body finally after the last step this will be executed and this just updates the loop variable okay so let's solve a simple problem it's called first n number sum it's about writing a program which sums the numbers from from one to n and prints at each step of this process the uh, current result so it reads a number n and sums all numbers from 1 to 10 and prints something like for 5 it says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals to 15 so if we enter as input 6 the result will be 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 2 and the sum which is 21 so let's solve this problem it's called first and numbers sum i'll create a new class here which will be called first and numbers sum okay and this class will hold main method which uh, will read a scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system.n okay and i'll read the input value n it will be something like int n equals to scanner dot next int please read me the next int and then uh, i'll make a for loop for i using this template for i starts from 1 to n it will be 1 2 3 4 until n okay and i will need the sum long sum equals zero at the beginning and at each iteration sum will be increased with i and after that it will be printed something like uh, okay it will be increased by 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 i but additionally i will print i uh, but i will need this plus this plus will be if something like okay i'll print the plus um, just to see what happens and i'll make it i'll print i then i'll print this plus let's see what will happen just as a start it's not finished the, the solution is not finished so i print five it says one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus so i have one additional plus here which is not needed so i'll say if i is less than n only at this case i'll have plus so now this was plus will be removed okay and now i should print equals and 
the sum which I have already calculated. So if I print uh, 5, the sum is this. Oh, the sum looks like the sum here is incorrect. But why? 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay, I will use the debugger here and will. Ah, because I sum I 1 plus 2 plus 3. Let's see what happens. I'll say debug here because it's unusual. So the debugger should stop here when I press 5. So the sum is initially 0 and i is 1. F8. Sum is now 1. And I print 1 plus. So now i is 2 and the sum is now 2. Oh, oh, it's equals plus e. It should be sum plus equals e or sum equals to sum plus e. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> what a ugly book. Okay, so we fix the bug and now the result is correct. The next uh, example is 6 and if we sum the numbers from 1 to 100, the result will be this. It works very, very well. Okay, so we solved this problem and this is the solution I had in mind before the start. We start from sum 1, we print 1. And we iterate from 2 to n, and we print plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, until n. And we increment the sum with this i at each, um, at each step. So finally, we print equals to the sum. Uh, my solution was a little bit different, but in a sense, it's the same thing. We iterate over the numbers, we print them, and we, we calculate the sum of them. Okay, so let's go ahead to with another example. It's about writing a program to some given n numbers. So it reads from the input uh, n, which is the count to the numbers to come, and after that it reads n floating point numbers it calculates and prints their sum. So, for example, if we want to sum the numbers 10, 20, and 30, we should first specify that we'll have three numbers, and after that, we'll print 10, 20, and 30, and the sum will be 60, we'll, we'll enter. So, this is the input. It first enters the number n here, and after that, n times it enters floating point number. Another example is this, 4, and we sum these numbers, and the result is 6.4. Okay, so let's go ahead to solve this problem. I'll create a class which will be called sum n numbers, because this is the uh, problem I want to solve. And in the main, I will go at the next uh, file to take this scanner and reading n. We'll return back using control tab. We'll import this Java YouTube scanner automatically. So now we have n. And I'll say that the sum, double sum, starts from zero because if the numbers are still not summed, their sum at the start is zero. After I take the first number, I will append it, I will add it to the sum. 
and it will increase later i'll add the next number the next and so on so i will do something like uh four i want to have n times to enter a number something like double number equals to scanner dot next double i take the next number and i sum it sum equals to sum uh, equals to sum plus number okay and finally we print the sum let's see how this works run this code and let's see whether it's correct or not i'll enter three numbers 10 20 30 and the result is six looks looks like it works and i will enter two numbers 1.5 and 3.5 the sum is five okay and if i enter this this example it's very interesting I'll show you something unusual for Java, uh, typical for Java, but unusual for you. This is the result. It's in fact 6.4. The sum is 6.4 if we use the calculator. But see what happens. This happens because uh, Java and also the microprocessors in the computer working correctly and they uh, don't re represent correctly the floating point numbers so if we have 6.4 there is no such number in in the representation this number can be represent, re represented with some approximations this is because of the ieee uh, 754 standard uh, but generally you should be aware of this and if you want to uh, print this correctly you can just format it percent uh, f2 for example print f with slash n print the sum so it will be something quite 6.4 oh uh, was this correct uh, it's point dot 2f okay to use two digits after the decimal point so now it's correct but if we have 12 digits after the decimal point the result maybe will be incorrect oh it's still correct but if i have 22 digits after the decimal point maybe i'll have a problem do you see so the floating point numbers just pre they preserve a, a limited number of digits for the numbers and they work correctly uh, if you use only certain several digits in the number if you need more digits for example 100 then these numbers don't, don't work correctly but generally if we use money calculations for example in most countries these uh, two decimals places after the decimal point are enough okay so let's go ahead and see the solution i had in mind before the start i read the number n i start from sum zero n times i read from the next input from the standard input from the console and i append this number to the sum finally i print sum so this is very similar solution okay we learned how to use for loops in order to repeat from 1 to 10 from 1 to n or from 0 to n minus 1 repeating from certain starting position until some end position with i plus plus watch but 
we can use whoops with a step. So I'll show you how. Whoops with the step. In, in fact, use the step part in the for loop, which can either increase, decrease the value of the variable or change the value with some step or with under some certain formula. So this is an example how we iterate from 0 to 9 with step 2. It will print 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, so how we achieve this? We start from zero, we repeat while the number 10 is not reached and after each iteration the next value of i is calculated as i plus 2. I'll show you this example here in IntelliJ IDEA. So I'll have a for loop, okay, I'll use this template. It will be from zero to to 10 inclusively and it will be not i plus plus but it will be i equals to i plus 2 okay let's see what i will achieve run this example i will achieve 0 2 4 6 8 10 this is a step 2 usually we print this e plus equals Okay, let's run it again and see whether it works the same way. It will. Uh, what else? We can start from 100 and continue while i is bigger than 0. And I'll have i minus minus. So I have a step of minus 1. Let's see. It starts from 100. And it decreases one by one until one is reached. Or while wow, the number is positive. When it reached zero, it's the whoop stops. This is another example how we iterate from 10 to zero with step minus two. From 10 to zero inclusively, e minus equals two with step minus 2. Let's see this. It will be 10, 8, 6, etc. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Until 0. But this be, should be greater or equal than if we have the wrong uh, here. See what will happen. Nothing because this is true at the start and this uh, loop body will never be repeated. This is always false. Uh, it's not that it's false uh, at the start. So just be careful about this condition to be correctly uh, created. Also, it might not be i. It might be something else. This is a variable. It might be counter. So I'll start with 10. Counter. Wow, well, it's bigger than 0 counter plus equals 2 and I print the counter. This is called the loop variable. It might be i, x, counter or something else. Never mind. Okay, so this is how we can use loop for loop with a step. It's very po powerful but pay attention on the condition especially if you have negative step. Um, so one problem. How to create a program uh, which prints all the numbers ending by 7 in given range. So we'll read a number n and we should print all numbers from 7 to n which end with 7. For example 7, 17, 27 or 7, 17, 27, 37. The numbers less than or equals to this n, okay, which end by 7. Okay, how we can solve this? I'll create a new class and it, it will be called numbers ending by 7. By 7. 
Okay. I'll create my main method. And the most simple way to solve this is to I'll take this scanner and n because it's the same for this problem. It will be something like please start from zero until n inclusively and if i percent 10 equals 7 if the number ends by 7 print the number so let's see if we have as input uh, sorry i need to run this problem not the previous one if i have as input for example 40 it will be 7 17 27 37 but it's better to have a step was equal 7 and now if I start by 7 the if will not be needed see this will work the same way because it starts 7 plus 7 14 plus 7 21 etc so this is how this works exactly the same but it's less cold and more understandable and faster okay so this is how we solve this problem it's exactly this solution uh, it's oh it's i pull secures 10 sorry it sh this number should end by seven. Oh, what a mistake okay we have for example 40 so numbers which end by 7 are 7, 17, plus 10, 27, etc. Until this. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called exam countdown. To write a program which prints a countdown to an exam, like below. We read an integer t the days before the exam and we print uh, 5 days before the exam and the next day we print four days before the exam later we print three days before the exam two days before the exam one day before the exam and finally the exam has come okay this is an example if we start with three we print three days before the exams two day before the exam uh, one day before the exam etc and finally the exam has come Okay, I'll pre create a class which will be called count down. Exam count down. Exam count down. And the main method here will be something like I still have this in, in the clipboard. Uh, I'll need this number D. So I'll create a for loop from starting from t, it will be counter. Well, counter is bigger or equal than one, and it will be counter minus minus. And at the loop body, I'll print that uh, current day counter counter plus case before the exam okay and after the whoop finally I'll print something like the exam has come the exam has come let's see how this works I start this program and I start from 5 for example 5 days before the exam 4 days before the exam 3 days, 2 days and finally the exam has come we can start from 2 it's like this if we start from 0 exam has already come ok, so this is the example and this is the solution uh, we can it's very similar which but it's just 
similar loop similar for loop and the print is using printf and the exam has come as the final thing after the loop it's very simple thing just to demonstrate a loop which starts from n and decreases n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 until 1 the countdown okay let's go ahead with the next topic it's about iterating over characters it might be useful in certain situations uh, but let's start uh, with the way computers represent text so computers only can understand numbers if you want to use text we need to match uh, text values to certain numbers so the ASCII American standard for coding of information or something like this is the numerical representation of a character for example the character number number uh, 97 97 is the char A the char P is 90 A this is in hex and this is in html so numbers have ascii code ascii is the american standard for for the characters okay it's a standard and you can learn more at here asciicode.com there are many sites like this but this is something which uh, shows the numbers and their representation for example uh, the number 36 is the represent the dollar symbol the exclamation mark is 33 for example uh, the a capital is 65 for example a small is 97 for example x is 120 so these are the numbers in the ASCII table. Uh, they might be different. Uh, the numbers after 128 depends on the encoding. Sometimes they may hold uh, Kirlik letters, but sometimes they hold some other letters. Uh, but generally, uh, the ASCII table uses one byte 8 bits to represent the characters and there is another encoding called unicode which represents more much more characters uh, using some more powerful uh, encoding for example again each character has uh, a number but it supports 1 million characters for example the Kirillic letters the greek letters the arabic letters the chinese letters uh, indian letters etc 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 so java uses this unicode which is an extension of the ascii standard and it holds much more characters okay why i explain this because values in char in the char data type which are enclosed by apostrophes are encoded in this unicode in java we can have four loops which iterates over character like it's shown below i'll show you this also so i can have four char x starts from a uh, x is less than or equal to z x plus plus and i can print this character x so see what's the result it's from a to z the entire english alphabet with small letters do you see so i can start from uh, a to z capital and this is 65 66 and, and the other symbols i can also uh, take the numeric value 
I can print X and I can print space after that and I can print the int of X. See, this is called type conversion. I convert X from char, from letter to number to int. This will give it its Unicode number. Okay, so these are the numbers. If I start from Kirlik A to Kirlik Ya, see what will happen. It will print above uh, its this is the number. So this is the Kirlik alphabet. I can do similarly for the Greek alphabet, for the Chinese alphabet, etc. So they have numbers. This is these are the concepts that uh, characters in computers have numbers. Different encoding tables may give them different numbers, but generally this universal Unicode character representation is used and it's widely accepted. Everyone can read Unicode. Okay, so we can iterate over characters and we can uh, transfer from char to int and the opposite. So if I have for loop int from uh, 1 until 10, i is less than equal 10, i plus plus, I can print i, but I can print char of i plus 65 minus 1. So this will print A, B, C, D, the first 10 English alphabet letters. How this happens and A, B, C, D until J. Because I know that A is 65 minus 1 and plus 1 or I can do this from 0 until 10. So I plus 65 is the first letter 65 66 is the next and i convert this to char so this works very well and this will print the first 10 english capital letters so this is how characters work in java and we can convert like this ch char 65 will print this so that's all about using characters now let's solve a problem which is called latin letters write a program to print the latin letters in certain range we read two letters on separate lines uh, and we print all letters in this range for example if we print a and c we start from a until c if we print from w to z it will be w x y z this is another example from f to q it will be f g H I G etc until Q. Okay, so let's solve this problem. It's called Latin letters. I will create a new Java class Latin letters with A letters, and I'll have this main for. Uh, I will need the scanner. I'll take it from here. And I'll need to read the first letter string uh, letter is scanner dot next one. But I don't need the, the letter as a string. I need the letter as a char. So I'll take the first of this next line dot char at position zero. This is a little bit tricky, but if you have a string, for example, hello, hello at position zero is this H. At position 1 is this E. At position 2 is this. 
So I take the first letter and I transfer it to char. This is specific. And this is the start letter. And also I will read the same way the end letter. And now once I have these two letters, for example, X and Z, I can iterate using a for loop, something like char letter starts from start letter until letter is less than or equal to end letter and letter plus plus. So I can increment this character. Plus plus for a character means just give me the next uh, letter in the alphabet. And I'll print this letter. It should be on the same line. So it will be letter plus empty. And finally I'll print the new line. Let's see what happens. So for example, I want all English letters from A to E. It's A, B, C, D. Looks correct. From A to Z. Looks correct. And what will happen if I have from A capital until X small. It's A, B, C, D. So it's the alphabet. After that some other letters. Then the alphabet. Why? Because this is the numbers. These are the numbers. This is 97, 96, 95, etc. So, after Z, the next ASP code character is this. Before A, it's the this left apostrophe. So, this is how it works. And... This is the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. The specific thing here is dot char at zero. Because if we have scanner dot next line, it will read a string which may hold several letters. So we take the first letter only from this string. Then we iterate and print uh, this. Okay. We are ready for the next topic for today. It's about infinite loops. Infinite loops, it's about repeating some piece of code infinitely. How we can achieve this? Uh, just like this. We can have empty initialization, empty condition and empty increment. For semicolon, semicolon, and this is an infinite loop. I'll show you uh, here. So I can have for semicolon semicolon and infinite loop and I print hello for example so see what will happen ah sorry I need to run this program not the Latin letters program it just says hello do you see and it will hang because it's infinite it's highly not recommended to do this but sometimes people do it. So why they do it? Because they can do like this. Uh, I read a, a string, string name is scanner dot next one and after that I say hello was name was exclamation see what will happen this is the word in letters sorry I want this main to be started so I'm Svetlin. Hello Svetlin. I'm Peter. Hello Peter. I'm Mariah. Hello Mariah. This is something which is very often. For example, the traffic whites, they just repeat the same thing infinitely. 
they start the green white, then the yellow white, then the red white, and then again the green white. And this is infinite. So this is something absolutely valid. But I can say if name is and I say break. Break means exit from this loop. Break the loop. So oh this it, it doesn't work in Java. It goes end. Okay. And now I'm enter some names. Mariah, hello Mariah. Uh, for example, Muhammad, hello Muhammad. For example, Peter, hello Peter. And hello and and process finished. So this is how I can make infinite loop, but I can still stop it under certain condition. So this is how infinite loop work in programming. They repeat certain logic infinitely. For example, in game development, we have continuously drawing the game environment. We draw the screen, uh, we take the input from the players, we make some calculations and draw the screen again. We take some input from the uh, players, we recalculate the game logic and we draw the game environment again on the screen. So this is repeated infinitely. And when we draw animations, we draw a frame, wait a little bit, draw another frame, etc. Uh, in web servers, we wait for plants and when they come, we serve them. For example, uh, the site google.com uh, waits for clients to come and when someone comes it prints the Google uh, website. So this is a problem which sums numbers until stopped. We want to read intentions from the console and print their sum until zero is entered. So example we enter five it says the sum is five. We add three and the sum is a we add two and the sum is ten. We add 10 and the sum is 20. We print 0, enter 0 and we say goodbye. So this is how this will work. Some numbers until stopped. I will create a Java class. Some numbers until stopped. Ugly name, but, but it's correct. So what I'll have, I have this scanner, it's on the clipboard. And I'll say something like for infinite loop, and at each iteration we read a number, something like int num equals to scanner dot next next int. Okay, and once I have the num, I will sum it. Uh, it will be something like long sum starts from zero and I'll say sum equals to sum plus the number okay equals sorry and I'll print it something like the sum is now was the sum okay with spaces around and let's see what happens I run this and I start from 5, the sum is 5, more 3, 8, more 5, 13, more 2, 15, but this will never stop. If I say if here, if the num is 0, then I will break and after the whoop I will print goodbye let's see what happens now I enter number 5 it seems 5 3 it's safe 
zero it says goodbye so this is what we needed to implement this is the solution it's very 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 similar i read the next integer if it is zero i stop the loop otherwise i sum the next number i add it to the num to the sum and i print the sum finally i print goodbye but this is after the entire loop has completed and stopped okay this was the last thing i had in mind for this lesson and now it's your time to work with loops it's very 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 important that you write your code you need to solve some problems in order to learn in practice how to work with loops to implement see see or how home works in the wording system and try to work on them after a while i'll come back and i'll show you my solutions but please try to write some loops and write some code because programming is learned only by coding let's now solve the problems you had as assignments so i will show you my solutions and i hope that you have um, successfully solved at least part of them so let's go with the practical coding exercises and the solutions that i want to give you for you just as a hint uh, to help you solve them yourself because you will work coding when you solve the problems yourself, not when you are listening and watching videos uh, about how others uh, do the same thing. So the first problem is called power of number. It's about writing a program to calculate n raised to the power of p. So we read a number n, which is a floating point number, and a power p, uh, so this power is an integer and we need to calculate and print the result of, uh, of n to the power raised to the power of p. So we are not allowed to use the mat.pow function which does exactly this thing. Uh, we want to use whoops because we are now learning how to use whoops. Uh, let's uh, give you some example. Dver, uh, 2 ra raised to the power of 5 is 32 and also 3 raised to the power of 4 it's 81 and 2.5 raised to the power of 3 is 15.625 how did this uh, runs uh, let, let let's see uh, so 2 raised to the power of 5 is in fact is in fact 2 multiplied by 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 and this is 5 times right so we need to repeat 5 times the multiplication by 2 and how we start we start from 1 because 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1 2 raised to the power of uh, 1 is 2 is 1 multiplied by 2 so if we have power 1 we multiply by 2 if we have power 2 we multiply 2 times by 2 if we have power of 3 we multiply 3 times by 2 so we need to multiply this p times multiplication by this multiply by this and start from one so this is just a simple loop i will write the code to show you how this works power of numbers so i open intellij idea and in my project for loops i'll create a new java class called power of number okay and i'll put the main method and i'll take the scanner from the previous uh, was because I don't want to write this again and I will read the input int n equals to scanner dot next next integer okay this is the uh, next double it it will be double double the uh, number we raise to certain power and the power uh, int p the power will be the scanner dot next next 
int. Okay, so we say that double result initially is one because if we uh, raise n to the power of zero, the result will be one. And one is neutral value for the multiplication. Just like when we calculate a sum, we start from zero. It's neutral for counting from, for sums. And for multiplication, the neutral value is one. We uh, perform a whoop and we repeat p times p times we multiply the result, result equals to result multiplied by n. So if we have uh, zero, this loop will not be executed and the result will be one. If we have two raised to the power of one, this will be uh, executed once and the result will be two, etc, etc, etc. So finally, we'll print the result. And let's run and test whether this works correctly. So 2 raised to the power of 5 should be 33, uh, 32. Let's check. Oh, it takes a lot of time to compile. 2 raised to the power of 5, it's 32. It's correct. 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1. Uh, 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2. 2.5 raised to the power of 2 is 6.25. And our example here, 2.5 at power of 3, it's 15.625. Looks, this works. 3, 4 is 81. 3, 4 is 81. Works correctly and we can be sure that we multiply n times, uh, p times, we multiply by n. So we achieve n by n by n, etc. by n, and this is p times. And when p is 0, the result will be 1. When p is 1, the result will be n. If will be n and if p is 2, the result will be n by n, etc. This is how this works and this is the algorithm. You should learn how to write such simple algorithms based on four loops. We repeat p times multiplying by n. Okay, so let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. Uh, we read the double n, the number we want to raise to certain power. We read the power p uh, and we start from uh, initial result 1. We repeat p times and we multiply the result by n uh, p times. And finally, we print the result. Exactly the same solution which I wrote uh, a few seconds ago. The next problem is called multiplication table. It's about to write a program which prints the multiplication uh, table such as we use when we are at school. Uh, it's a 510 for given integer n. We read n and we print something like this. For example, if we print uh, read 2, uh, the result will be 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. 2 multiplied by 3, uh, 2 is 4 until 10. So we have a loop from 1 to 10 and we print this n multiplied by this loop variable and the result. Very, very, very simple problem, even more simple than the previous one. Let's solve it. Multiplication table. Uh, new Java class, multiplication table. Uh, I'll take these two lines here. Uh, I'll create the main method. I'll increase the font size slightly. Uh, the scanner is imported and now this int next int will be read. So we have a for loop from 1 until 10 inclusively. And we want to print something like print uh, something like uh, i plus 
multiplied by let's see uh, by i no it's n multiplied by i plus equals two and the result is i multiplied by n or maybe n multiplied by i this will be the result from multiplication and one more bracket so this is the solution i have and let's test it so if we have two as input the multiplication table will be this two by one two by two multiplied and the result if we have for example seven the multiplication table is like this okay i think it's run it's correct uh, and it's pretty simple so i don't feel i need to discuss this more let's see the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson i read and i repeat uh, 10 times from 1 to 10 for the variable, loop variable i i calculate the result n multiplied by e and i print but i use here print f uh, and uh, i use template strings so like percent e and i print that n multiplied by i uh, is equal to this result okay let's go ahead with the next problem it's called biggest number it's about writing a program to find the biggest among uh, n given numbers the the greatest the maximal value number so we read n which is the amount of the input numbers and n numbers which are floating point and we find and print the biggest number for example if the numbers are are this 40 90 90 and 50 the biggest number is 90 okay if there are four uh, numbers which are minus 40 minus 3 minus 90 and minus 50 the biggest is minus 3 and finally if we have two uh, 14 point numbers 1.5 and 2.5 the biggest of them is 2.5 okay let's solve this problem it's called biggest number biggest number okay I created a class for this. I'll write the main method. I'll uh, take uh, this from the clipboard, but I want to read the next int. And I have n numbers. So a uh, double num is equal to scanner dot next next double. Okay, so I have the number. And if this number is bigger by the current biggest num, I'll say that the biggest num equals to num. So I read the next number, for example, 100. If it is bigger by the current, uh, it's this. So how to start uh, double biggest num is zero, but zero will work if we don't have this case in this case zero will not work because the starting number should be something very very small like let's start from a neutral value which is like this okay so this number is assumed to be smaller than any other that will come uh, from the input and so if we have for example minus 100 it will be greater bigger than this num so if we pass through all the numbers and check each of them whether it's bigger or not we'll find the biggest so i'll print something like biggest and the biggest number let's see whether this works correctly so i have for example uh, three numbers 10 20 and 25 uh, which is the biggest 25 okay if i have five numbers minus two minus three minus four minus five and minus 0 0.5 the biggest is minus 0 0.5 looks like it works correctly if i have two minus 3.5 and uh, 1.55 1.55 is the biggest looks like it works correctly unless we have very small number for example uh, this one for example and five the biggest is five okay but uh, sorry if we have this one and if we have 
this one. The biggest is, is this, which will be incorrect. I, I mean that if we have this one, and if we have this one, the biggest is still this number. Why? Because this is a new, invalid neutral value. So if I start from double dot uh, negative infinity, this will work better because this is smaller than any number which we can enter through the keyboard. Let's try this again. Uh, the neutral value is negative infinity. So if we have minus, uh, for example, two numbers, two numbers, and the first is this one, and the second is this one, this looks to be the bigger one. Okay, so this is printed, this is the same number like this, but printed is in a scientific notation. This number multiplied by uh, 10 raised to the power of 21. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead with the next problem. But first, let's see the uh, original solution. It is this one. We start from uh, reading n from the uh, input to know how many numbers we want to expect from the input. We take uh, uh, the current max number as integer dot mean value or uh, yeah, this will work also integer dot mean value, also uh, double dot in minus infinity. It, it's similar. This is something very, very, very small negative number. Uh, this solution works for int, to be honest. So we have scanner dot next int and we, we read the next number. And if the next number is bigger than the current max number, we assign the max number to be the current the next number so finally we print the, the solution this this solution will work for integers only because it doesn't handle double double uh, floating point numbers okay let's go ahead with the next problem it's uh, very similar to the previous one it's about writing a program to find the minimum and maximum of given uh, set of numbers the biggest and the smallest number so we read and the count of numbers to be read and read after that and 14 point numbers and we find and print the min and the max number this is an example we have five numbers and these five numbers are 10 10 12 304 10 and 50 and we uh, have the min number 10 and the max number 3.4 because this is very similar to this one i will copy paste this class control c control v min and max number will be the name of the new class and it is copy of the previous one so uh, we have the biggest num and we'll, we need to have the smallest num which will be positive infinity it will start from infinite number plus plus infinity okay and it will uh, if we find smaller than the current uh smallest num we will assign the smallest num to be num and we want to print both of them the smallest and the biggest smallest or min and the biggest which is max uh, min all smallest number let's see whether this works so, for example, we have three numbers, uh, three numbers, 10, minus 5, and 20, and the min is 5, and the max is 20. This will not work if we have zero numbers, because, it, in fact, it works. It says that the minimum number is infinity, and the maximum is minus infinity, but we assume that we have at least one number, for example, 55, and both min and max is this number if we have three numbers for example minus 5 minus 2.5 and minus uh, 1.5 the biggest is one point minus 1.5 and the smallest is minus 5 uh, so this is how this works it's very 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 similar again we start from a neutral number we scan through the numbers and if we find then the next number is better than the current we assign the current to the uh, this number which comes from the input 
we don't need this it's imported by mistake so let's go ahead with the next solution but first let's see how we solve this problem it's double dot mean value and max value uh yeah this is very very similar to minus infinity and plus infinity it will work the, the same way there are different values but uh, infinity is a special value which means uh, endless uh, infinity number and max value is the biggest value which can be represented within the range of double both will work correctly and we can uh, handle this like in this if we have min and max and min is very big value and max is very small value if we have the current value x if it is better than min we assign min to, to it if we have x which is bigger than max we assign max to x and finally we print the min and max number uh, using some kind of formatting strings um, so that's all we have uh, and uh, I believe you need to learn this min and max find finding algorithm um, because it's in the basics of searching for something uh, and finding the best value. For example, we want to, in a production of bank system, we want to find all the people uh, who have uh, accounts with less than 1000, uh, for example, um, dollars balance uh, or we want to find the account with the biggest balance so this is uh, something very often um, found problem in the our real world let's go ahead with the next problem it's called vowel sum it's about writing a problem to sum n vowels according to the table we want we, we assume that A uh, weights 1, E uh, weights 2, etc. Like, like at this table. And for example, X weights 0 because it's not vowel. All others are, are not vowels. We read an integer N and we read N characters each at a separate length. For example, 2AG is 1 because A is 1. Okay, A is 1 and G is zero because it's not vowel it's not in this table another example is three i x u i is five i is five uh, and also u uh, is i is three sorry i is three and u is five and the sum is eight okay let's solve this vowel sum uh, i'll create a new class called vowel sum and this vowel sum will have a main method and in this main method I will have uh, not this I need these two lines which are very similar in most of the problems we solve today I import the scanner and I read the number n and then I, I read n times I will start from um, from some zero. I take one because I don't know which type will be enough. Maybe int will also work well. Um, and I read n times a number. So int number. Uh, no, it's not a number. I need to read a char char neck um, char letter equals to scanner dot next one and but the next one is a string which is a sequence of letters so we need to take the first letter here if they enter for example hello we want to take just h which is the char at position zero okay so now if the letter is for example a then the sum will be increased with one in the same way if it is e will be increased by two if it is i it will be increased by three if it is o it will be increased by four and if it is u it will be increased by five and finally, uh, we want 
to print the sum of volumes. So if we have 3ixu, let's check whether this works. We have three numbers, ixu, three numbers, i. Oh, string index out of range. If you don't have experience, you will be uh, unable to find the problem. But the problem is that we read in from the scanner and after that we read the next line. This is incorrect and will not ring. work. You cannot read a line after reading in. You should read only line by line and use integer.parsint. This, this is how the scanner class works because the scanner dot net next in reads a word of a hat from the input from the given input and it fails to read the next line after that this is just the way it works so we either read all the lines line by line or we read only numbers if we mix them this will not work let's run this again and see what happens if we have 3ixu, the result should be 8. 3ixu, the result is 8. If we have 2ag, the result will be 1. 2ag, the result is out. If we have 0, the result will be 0. Obviously, the sum of 0 letters is 0. So, let's see the example I had in mind before the start of this lesson. Uh, we read the next line and we parse it to int. We start from vowels of zero. This is the neutral value, the sum of zero uh, letters. We read n times a letter or a character, which we, is the next one, and the first uh, letter of the next one, which is a position zero. Okay, this one. And we use switch if the where uh, the letter is A, we increase with I, uh, with 1. If it is E, we increase with 2, etc., 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 according to the entire vowel table. And finally, we print the vowel sum. It's very similar, but it uses switch case instead of if else. Both are correct. So let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called zigzag number, uh, zigzag sum. It's about writing a program to calculate the so-called zigzag sum for given numbers. Let's define this. We read the number n and uh, followed by n uh, integers. Uh, for every odd one, we add the number to the result, and for every even one, we subtract subtract the number from the result. So this is an example. We have two numbers. Uh, this is odd one, one one. We Add it. This is uh, even one. We uh, subtract it. So it's ten minus minus twenty, which is thirty. Another example is this: three plus uh, plus ten is ten. Minus twenty is minus ten. Plus five is minus five. It's very similar, like just a normal sum but we either add or subtract depending on the line on the current line so sum n numbers i will take this uh, problem as uh, base i'll say control c control v and we'll say zigzag sum okay so this zigzag sum is something like uh, read and then use the sum uh, read the next double number and here we always add the next number to the sum but if i is i will start from 1 to n if i is odd okay i will add it otherwise i will subtract it subtract it like this let's see whether this work so we have zigzag sum and we have for example three numbers 3 10 25 3 10 25 minus 5 works correct so we can go ahead uh, with the solution i had in mind before the start 
we read the number of numbers which we shall process and we start from neutral sum zero we repeat n times from one to n we read one 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 two one three until n we read the next number if the current one i is odd we add the number to the sum otherwise we subtract the number from the sum and finally we print the calculated sum very um, simple and i don't need feel that it needs more discussion so let's go ahead with the next problem which is called division by two three and four this is more interesting problem it's about calculating statistics about division to two three or four we have n integers and these integers some of them are divisible to two some of them are divisible to three some of them are divisible to four uh, some of them are can be divided to multiple of these numbers so we want to print how many percentages uh, of these input numbers are divisible by two by three and by four so this is an example which will explain this better we have three numbers these three numbers are three six and nine so how many of them can be divided by two without a reminder uh, only this one out of three which is 33 percent right how many of these input numbers can be divided by three this this and this all of them 100 percent can be divided to three without a reminder because three is one by three six is two by three and nine is three by three and again how many of these input numbers can be divided by four without a reminder no one of these numbers can be divided by four so the result is zero percent another example is three the numbers these numbers four six and three and this and this two out of three can be divided by two two out of three can be divided by three these numbers two out of three okay and one out of three here can be divided by four this one so let's solve this um, this problem i'll call the class division statistics it will show statistics of division by two three and four it's too long for me so i'll stop here uh, on the naming i'll take these two lines i'll need them copy paste control c control v and now i'll create a loop from uh, zero to n and i will have uh, int num equals to scanner dot next int so i have the number and if the number percent two is zero i will need to count this so num give two plus plus i will increase the count of numbers which are divisible to the number of two in the same way i will count how many numbers can be divided by three without a remainder and uh, by three and how many numbers can be divided by four without a uh, remainder uh, i'll have this is zero and this is zero and this is zero uh, okay i can uh, use this comma separated definitions uh, because all of these numbers are real this this is how i start and now i have uh, the count for example uh, two out of three and i want to go to percentages so i have that num two out of n which is this percentage so i will have 100 by this and this will be double 
uh, something like nums div to percentage. This is how I calculate the percentage. How many percents are divisible by two? We have this, for example, five out of 10, which is 50%. If we have five out of 10, this will be 50. If I have uh, two out of three numbers, this will be two divided by three, 60, 0 0.66666 in period by 100, and this will be the correct number. So this is the formula to convert from this div2 value out of n into percentages. It's very simple and obvious for everyone who knows how percentages work. Okay, in the same way for the numbers divisible by 3 and 4, I calculate the value and finally I print the uh, this s percent dot to or dot to f floating point numbers with two decimals after the decimal point okay slash n and print f formatted output and after that I print this and I want to print the the percent the how to say the percent like this the percent symbol but I'm not sure this will work correctly but let me try num2 and num3 okay so I have 3 3 6 9 3 3 6 9 6 oh no it's zigzag soon I didn't start the correct problem I want to start this division statistics 3 3 6 9 oh a noun for matter at this one looks like this percent doesn't work correct so I think I can solve this in a very simple way just write the percent along with the new y symbol at the next one okay run we have Three, three, six, nine. Mm. Percent dot F two. Maybe I not using the correct formatter. Three, three, six, nine. No. Hmm. print f okay looks like I forgot how to print with percent point to f I believe it was yes uh, okay I will look in Google mm, like this Java two decimal digits print print f and the correct uh, is system percent point to f yes this is what i have and the value i don't think i have a problem here and this div3 and this div4 but I'm not sure what happens. Print F. Let's run this again and check what happens. I have three values, which are 30, 60, and 90. Cannot convert integer at this one. Cannot F. Mm, 
Why? Oh, because I print the integer number and not the percentages. Oh, oh problem. I, I print the count of occurrences instead of the percentage of occurrences of these numbers. Okay, let's uh, go ahead again after the fix. Uh, I have three numbers, three, six, nine, 33, 100, zero. Let me check 33100 and if I have 3463, again another test 3463, it's 666633. No, it's incorrect. It's incorrect and I want to find why. Because here we have this is integer, this is integer, this is integer. The entire expression will also be an integer. If I want to be floating point, I need to multiply by 100.0. Let's try again and see whether this will fix the problem. 3, 4, 6, 3. 3, 4, 6, 3. Yes, this works correctly. Here, this is a floating point expression, which will run correctly. So, let's summarize this problem. We read n and we count how many numbers from the input are divisible by 2, how many numbers are divisible by 3 and how many numbers from the input uh, data are divisible by 4. We calculate them in percentage. How? I have one, I have one hundred point zero percentages at all if n of n if all of them are divisible by this the result will be 100 percent if we have two out of three out of four it will be this percentage so i convert to percentage and finally i print this percentages this is the entire solution and let's go ahead to have to see what i had in mind before the start of this le uh, lesson i read the next all the numbers and i count how many times i i have number which is dividable by two by three and by four and finally i'll ca calculate the percent here the these counters are doubles so this calculation is an expression of type double okay why because this is double this is int and this is int but this is double. So this division will be floating point division. If this is int here, like my mistake at the beginning, if this is int, then this will be rounded to integer number and the percentages will be rounded. They will be incorrect. Finally, we print the result like I shown you with percent point to f. Okay, let's go ahead for the next um, problem. It's called Roller Coaster Simulator. We have a roller coaster and we have uh, some places in it. Uh, for example, uh, we have places here. For example, one, two, three, five places. And we have some uh, minimum age. For example, the minimum age is five. And we have some a queue of people, for example, six years old, seven years old, three years old, five years old, six years old, and 11 years old person. So this guy will be here. This will be here. This is not within the age limit. It will wait. And this will take this seat. This will take this seat. And now the roller coaster is full. All the seats are taken by children, so it can run. And if all places are taken, uh, it prints the roller coaster departures. Otherwise, it says waiting. This is an example. If you have two uh, places at the roller coasters and ten uh, limit, this is the age limit here, and this is the 
places count here too. Okay. And we have these children. This matches the age restriction. This matches the age restriction. This doesn't match the age restrictions. And we have two places occupied by two children. So it's totally okay. The roller coaster is full, it will departure. Otherwise, another example we have uh, a roller coaster of uh, five places with 11 SH limit. And we have no people waiting here. So uh, the queue will be empty and the places in the roller coaster will all be um, not occupied. So it should print waiting. Okay. So let's solve this problem. It's called roller coaster. Okay. I'll start from the main method and from reading the input something like this. I'll take some uh, the scanner because I don't want to write it here and I'll have in places. I'll read the places, the age limit and I'll read n, the numbers in the queue and I'll read n times the uh, int child age is scanner dot next int. So I have for example two places in the roller coaster. The age limit is 50 is 5 for example I have a child age of 3 then 4 then 7 then 3 again etc 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 and if the child age is bigger or equal by the age limit then I have a uh, place field places field plus plus which will start from zero initially. So finally, if places field are bigger than the places this means that the roller coaster will departure. I will take this one because I don't want to write it otherwise the roller coaster will wait waiting I will print this message and let's see what happens run in this case the roller coaster is waiting oh looks not correct I have two Okay, let's debug this. I will put a breakpoint here and debug this. Run this through the debugger. I go on the console and I print this input. So I have F8. I have the scanner. The places, the places are 2. This is correct. F8. The age limit is 10. It's okay. How many people I have in the Q3? The first person in the Q is a child of age 15. Is it above the age limit? Yes, it is. So places field are 1. The second child is 12, which is bigger uh, than the age limit. So it will be taken to the roller coaster. And the next child is was too little to be there. So I have two places and two people waiting for these places. So ah, I forgot to have EQ. If the people waiting are more equal than the places in the roller coaster, if the allowed children, eligible children waiting for the roller coaster are more than the places available, it will departure. Let's run this again. Okay. Otherwise, if the children are less than the places, the roller coaster will wait, will wait until more children come. OK. 
Okay, I'll run this again and it will show you what happens. What happens here is that it's waiting. Looks like I have solved this problem. And let's go ahead with this roller coaster simulator to see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. So I read the places and I read the min minimal age restriction. I read the queue size, uh, this n, how many people are on the queue, and I count the valid people. The valid people count is that uh, I read the person age, uh, and if it is bigger than the in mean recoil than the mean age, and I still have places in the roller coaster, I mm, account that this person will be uh, will take one of the places of the seats. And finally, I print the result. If the places are equal to the valid people, in this case, the roller coaster will departure, otherwise it will wait. So this is a valid solution. Okay, this was uh, one of the uh, problems. Let's go ahead with the next one. Uh, to write a program to check whether the sum of pairs check the sum of pairs for differences. Let, I will give you an example. We read n numbers and n pairs of numbers, which means that I read uh, 2 times n numbers. Something like 2 numbers, after that more 2 numbers, after that more 2 numbers, and these numbers have sums. I work with these sums. And if the sum of all pairs is the same, I print the value of this sum. Otherwise, I print the maximum difference of the sum between two sequential pairs. This is an example. I have two pairs. Two pairs. The first pair and the second pair. The first pair have sum minus one and the second have sum minus one. So, yes, all pairs have the same sum and the value of this sum is minus one. Another example, this is the sum, is this, we have two pairs, the first sum is 11, the, the second is 10, and the difference is 1, the maximum difference here. I may have another, uh, another uh, example where I have three pairs, for example, the first pair is 3 and 5, which will be 8, the second pair will be uh, 5 and 4 which will be 9 and the last pair is for example 1 and 1 which is 2 so the difference here is 1 the difference here is how many? it's 7 so the max diff will be 7 and this is the output 7 3 3 5 5 4 1 1 okay so let's solve this problem it's a little bit more complex than the previous one i will take these two things and i will write a new java class it will be Code uh, this problem is called equal pairs. Equal pair pairs pairs. Okay, this equal pairs will have the main method, and in, inside this main method, it will have this scanner, and it will read the number n, and inside this number n it will have a whoop uh, for whoop n times it will read a pair it will be something like int num1 equals to scanner dot next int uh, just to check whether these numbers might be uh, assume they are numbers they are doubles okay next double because we don't know anything else about them num2 and the sum 
is num1 plus num2. Okay, we have the sum and uh, this num2. We have the sum and we want to see whether this sum is different than the previous sum. So we will need a previous sum. Uh, uh, the difference is the previous sum minus the sum and by absolute value math.abs. Okay, this is the absolute difference. Without the minus, for example, if you have 5 and 6, the difference is 1. If you have 6 and 5, the difference is again uh, 1. Okay, so we have the difference. And if the difference is bigger than the max difference, then max difference will be difference. Okay, and the max difference should start with 0 because in the beginning, uh, if we have no numbers, the max difference is zero. It cannot be bigger than it. Uh, but the pref sum, the pref sum, how it will start? It will start from zero, uh, or it may just it will start with zero but with zero this difference will be incorrect so uh, we can say this previous sum will be valid only if we have at least two so here we have previous sum but here we don't have previous sum because there is no previous element here so if i is bigger than zero only in this case we may have difference and max difference okay so here if n is less than two the output is undefined mm. okay it should be like this n should be bigger than one uh, this is the a correction in the problem difference and finally we have the max difference so if the max different is zero if it is zero this means that all the sums are the same okay so I will print that the, all the sums are the same uh, and yes the value is the it will print something like yes the value is and the value is this the last the last sum this pref sum, but here I have, I remember the pref sum is equals to sum. Okay, the last sum, but if all the sums are the same, we either print the current sum or the previous sum because they, are, they have the same value. Otherwise, I'll print that no max div is the max difference it's the most complex problem we have solved until now in our training course about basics of programming and you need to learn how to solve such more complex problems let's try to solve this yes the value is one point minus one and here i have this and no max diff is one and let's see another way three i have five and three this is eight three and four this is seven the difference is one 
and 1 and 1 give this is 2 here it's let's see here the sum is 8 here the sum is 7 here the sum is 2 okay here the difference is 1 between these two and between these two the difference is 5 so the max difference is 5 the biggest of this okay so now it should print max diff 5 yes it works correctly 5.0 but we assume it's the same one uh, so this was the most complex problem and I have shown you how to solve it this is the solution I had in mind before the start I have the pref sum the previous sum uh, and the maximum difference of two sequential sums I start I read n times the current number and the next number so I don't I just read the sum which consists of two sequential elements and if i is bigger than zero which means that i have previous sum it exists if the previous sum exists i can calculate the current difference and if this difference is bigger than the max diff i remember it in max diff finally i remember the pref sum in the pref sum sum so at the next iteration here i will have the pref sum which will hold the sum from the previous step and here I will have the sum which is the current current and previous and I can calculate the difference and I can check whether the difference is better than the maximum so this is how this works equal pairs okay this was the last problem and in summary thank you for joining for the whoops lesson today we have learned how to use the four whoops to execute a block of code multiple times while certain loop variable changes its value from 1 to n or from 1 to 10 or in certain range step by step and the four whoops have components initialization condition step and body this is called initialization this is the initial uh, values of the loop variable this is the condition for repeating the loop again and again and again until this is not valid and this is the loop body which says what to execute more types and this is how we change uh, the loop variable in uh, inside after the loop body if this is empty here if we don't put anything here we'll have most probably endless loop if this condition is invalid we'll also may hit an infinite loop or endless loop so beware, beware. and uh, whoops are the first thing which is a little bit more complex than the, the previous lessons so put enough effort to solve the problems you had in the examples and in the homework and write code every day remember to become a software engineer you need to write code every day like people who want to become um, doctors they should study medicine every day for many years Why whoops in Java allow code blocks to be repeated as long as certain condition is true? Let's see how this works in more detail. As usually, I will explain the concepts to you through examples, then you will have homework exercises to practice your new skills from this topic. Let's do it! Okay, so let's now continue with the introduction of the why whoops. Why we need while whoops when we uh, develop 
software uh, in practice. Uh, assume this real life example, box of books. Assume we have a box full of books, but we don't know how many books we have. The books might be 10 or 20 or we don't know. It's just a box of books. So we can take the first book and remove it from the box. Later we can take, uh, take the next book and remove it from the box. Later we can keep removing uh, books from the box until the box is completely empty. Okay, so this is uh, what the wow whoops is in practice. While the box is not empty, please take a book and remove it. If it is not empty, take another book and remove it. If it is not empty, take another book and remove it. We don't know preliminary how many times we'll remove a book from the box, but we know for sure that uh, we have a condition, an exit condition, at which moment we can stop removing books at the moment of which the box is empty okay so let's demonstrate this control flow statement the so-called wow loop in practice using java i will show you how to use this in java so the wow loop is used to repeat a block of code until an exit condition is met this is how it works wow and some condition for example wow and it's less than five this is the start we can have some kind of initialization here before the the wow loop uh, the condition is is checked if it is true the comments inside the loop body will be executed if the condition is false the comments will not be executed and after the comments are executed in the loop body the condition is checked again and if it's true, they are executed again, and this repeats until the condition is uh, finally broken or, uh, or is false. Once the condition is false, uh, the whoop exits, and the one just after the whoop here will be executed. So this is how the while whoop works, and I'll show you this in action using Java. So this is an example. We want to print the numbers from 1 to 5. We start from int i is 1, from the initial value. While i is not reached 5, we print i and increase i. This is something very, very simple. I will create a new file, a new project here uh, in my IntelliJ IDEA uh, IDE, uh, something like file new project, which will be called wow whoops uh i'll create a common white app wow whoops java okay without a package this will be empty and i'll say finish in this window now i have an empty project which holds my main method here and i can work with wow whoops so let's see this example in i is oh int i is five is one uh so why i is still not reached five i do something print i and then in increase i by one control f5 and this is what we shall have here uh run the main maybe control f5 doesn't work at the first moment see what happens the numbers from one to five are there if we forget to increase i this will be endless loop while i is less than five print it and i is currently one and it will be i one for very long time so this is how the while loop works it may work even differently for example i can start from 10 and I can multiply i by 2, uh, for example, i equals i by 2, for example, I start from 1, until i reach, uh, until i is less than 100 million. So see what will happen, it will be 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 16, etc. This is the 2 to the power of n function. And this is the biggest number, which is less than 
this number here. So this is how the while loop work. We can have an initializing block before the loop, just like with for loops. Okay, this is the, the how it works. It has the condition. This is the most important. While this condition is true, the loop body will be repeated. If the loop body is a single command, it may state like this. If the loop body holds several commands, which is more typical, you should obligatory have this uh, curly brackets. Okay, so let's go ahead with the first problem. It's called decreasing numbers. We want to print the numbers from n down to 1, 1 using a while loop. We can do this with for loop as well, but now we are learning about how to use while loop. So we will uh, write a program which receives a number n and prints the number from n to 1. It's not a function, it's a program, Java program. Uh, which will receive the number n and will print from the numbers from n to 1 just like it's shown below. This will be called decreasing numbers. Okay, I'll go at IntelliJ idea and we'll say new Java class decreasing uh, numbers.java. Okay, so I have this and I'll define the main method and inside the main method uh, I will have I will first define the scanner to read the input scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in okay and now what I have uh, decreasing numbers okay I start from n int n equals to scanner dot next line next uh, next int okay and now I say wow n is bigger than or equal than one please do the following print n and then decrease n let's see whether this works correctly or not just a moment uh, I will need to run this project because control f5 run the previous one if i have five the output is 54321 okay so now what's next i can execute this again i if i enter 10 i have the numbers from 10 to 1 okay let's see what i had in mind before the start of this pro of this lesson uh, I have number which I read it from the scanner while the number is bigger than one I print the number and decrease it that's all let's take the next problem it's called number in range write a program to read the number in the range from 1 to 100 so the person enters a number a number from the console and checks if, the program should check if the number is in the range from 1 to 100 if no uh, the user is invited to enter a new number otherwise the number is entered and the program stops and the, the uh, input number is printed so the idea is that please enter a number if the number is invalid please enter again if the number is invalid please enter again and repeat this many times until a valid number in the range from 1 to 100 is entered for example the person enters minus 10 this is invalid it enters again 101 it's invalid it enters again 50 it's valid it's within the range so the program prints this number and stops number in range let's solve this problem new java class number in range okay so i'll define the main method i'll take this scanner here because i don't want to type it again and i'll import it so I do like this, uh, while I enter a number, uh, int num equals to scanner dot next, next integer, okay, while num is not valid, which means that num is less than 1, or num is bigger than 100, I'll do the following, uh, I'll just enter again and I'll print something like uh, invalid number try again for example 
and I'll enter this. So finally I'll print a uh, valid number colon and num. Let's run this and check whether this works correctly or not. So I enter some big number, it says invalid, try again. I enter some negative number, it says try again. I enter, for example, 38, that's valid. And the program is finished. So here we use while because we never know how many times this code will be uh, repeated. So we have uh, a set of comments here, the whoop body, and we don't know exactly how many times this whoop body will be repeated. It might be repeated zero times because the, and the number entered here is already correct, or it might be re repeated thousands of times, but we never know preliminary. For example, if we have valid number from the very beginning, this whoop will never execute because the, this uh, exit condition will be met uh, at the start. So this whoop will never be uh, executed. It will be executed zero times. Okay, let's go ahead with the uh, solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. Uh, it's exactly the same to be honest. So I don't need to command it further. Okay, we learned how to use while and how to use for whoops and how to choose the right whoop type. But let's see now uh, when to use while and when to use for. Uh, generally, while or for, both whoops can repeat a block of code multiple times. But the for whoop is typically used when we know preliminary the number of iterations. For example, we want to repeat exactly n times something. For example, we want to read n numbers from the console. Or we have n students and for each student we want to check something. We know exactly the numbers of iteration. Typically, we want to repeat from 1 to n or from 0 to n minus 1 or some more strange uh, uh, whoop with a step. We use while when we don't know when the exit condition will be met. For example, uh, we repeat until stopped. We read a number from the console and we enter zero, we stop. This is very typical for uh, while whoops. If we don't know when the exit condition will be met, we use while. If we uh, repeat something several times and we know this number how many times the repeat uh, the number of iterations we use for okay let's see now another problem called odd number it's about writing a program to enter an odd number it should read integer numbers from the console until an odd number is entered integers okay it prints the odd number as output so it's very similar to the previous one. We read something and if it is odd, it's printed. Otherwise, we enter again. So numbers in range, I will copy and paste this and we'll name it odd number or enter not number. So it takes a number if num percent two is zero, the number is even. I will say, please enter an odd number. And finally, I print the entered odd number. Let's start this. It's very similar. I initialize the scanner. Then I read a number. I enter a number. While the number is even, I enter a number again. Let's see this in action. I run this and I enter for example 20 at the start. Okay, please enter odd number 24. 24, please enter an odd number. 5, I'm done. Odd number. Or from the start I enter an odd number directly, for example 3 and the while loop 
will never be executed because this condition is false at the start. Okay, this is the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson and it is in practice the same one. Okay, the next problem is code number processor. It's about writing a program to process a sequence of comments. Uh, we read an initial number from the input and we read a sequence of comments, comments like ink, deck or and. Ink adds one to the number, increments the number, dex ink decrements the number and and prints the number and stops the program. So if we have five ink, this will be six and the output will be six. If we have five deck and the output will be four. Number processor. Let's solve this problem using while loops. I'll create a new Java class called number processor. Number processor. Okay. And in the main method, I'll have uh, this scanner and maybe uh, the input here. So I read a number initially, but and I say, wow, scanner, uh, I'll read a, a command, string command equals to scanner dot next, next line. I read the command, string command is scanner dot next y. Wow, the command is not equal to n. This means that the comment is not end and I should not stop. Finally, I, I will print the number. But now if the comment is ink, I'll say num++. Plus plus. Otherwise, if the comment equals tag, I'll say num minus minus else I'll say system.error, I'll print an error. This is a way to print errors. They will be covered differently. Uh, invalid command and I'll do nothing. So finally, I'll print when this output. So what's the idea? I read a number. I read a comment. If it is not end, I check for ink or deck and execute them or for invalid command and then I repeat the loop. If it is not end, uh, I will need to read the next command here. Uh, it's something like this. I read a command, for example, I read, I read 5 here, then I read a command, for example, this ink. Okay, is it end? No, it's ink, it's ink, so the number will be incremented and uh, I will read the next command. The next command here is end and now the loop will stop. Let's run this to check whether it works correctly. So I'll have, for example, 5 as input. Oh, it's invalid command. Why this happens? Do you know why this happens? I, I know why. Because uh, it, it doesn't trick the next one. Because after next int, next one, one doesn't work. So we need to have integer dot, dot parse int of scanner dot next one. We cannot use the next one after uh, after next int. Let's run this again and check whether it works correct. Okay, we have 5, increment 5, increment 5, increment 5, it should be 8, decrement 5, it should be now 7. I said hello, this is invalid command and I say end and the output should be 7. It works absolutely correctly. So this is how we can organize and this is where uh, th this program and this is where the while loop is very useful when we don't know at which time we should stop.
Okay, let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of the project of the lesson. I read the number, but as a whole line, not as next, next in as next line. Then I read the comment. If the comment is not end, while well, the comment is not end, I execute the comment if I recognize it. Uh, maybe we should have default here and print an error message. And finally, in at the end of the while loop, I read the next line again and I print the number finally because this is the output from our program, the, res the end result. Okay, so let's extend our knowledge with the so-called break operator, which is very useful because sometimes we want to exit from a loop under a certain condition. I'll show you how. The break operator is used for prematurely exiting a loop. It just exits the loop unconditionally and it skips everything to the end of the loop. Uh, so we can only exit a loop or use break inside the loop's body. If we try to use break outside of, of a loop, uh, it will say, uh, sorry, this is invalid and the program will not compile. When the break is executed, the code inside the loop's body after the break is skipped and it doesn't execute, which is obviously because break just breaks the loop. So this is an example of typical usage. Wow, true. Uh, Usually we have a infinite loop combined with break. We do something. For example, we enter a person name. We check whether the name is empty. If it is empty, we stop. We break. Otherwise, we process this person name. For example, we store it in a database or we print it or we uh, store it in a file or we send it over the network, etc, etc, etc. So this is a very typical pattern of implementing whoop logic. Uh, it's used when we don't know at which time the whoop will break. We know that we will repeat something many times, but we don't want the exit condition. So we write while true, we do something, we check for exit condition and uh, execute break. And after that, we do some more code. This is very, very, very common. And I'll show you how to use this. Okay. Uh, assume we have the following problem. Uh, we want to sum numbers from coming from the console until zero is entered. So we read an integer number, for example, five, and until we read zero, we say, wow, true, because we don't know at which time we will stop. We take the next num number, and if it is zero, we stop. Otherwise, if it's, if it's not zero, we add it to the sum and we print this sum. This is something very, very uh, useful and I will demonstrate this. Sum numbers until zero. I'll create a class sum numbers until zero and I will demonstrate you how this works. So in the main method, I'll have this scanner, I'll copy it, control tab, control V, control C, control V, and I'll say, wow, true. Okay. And before that, I'll have long sum is zero. And I say, int uh, number as scanner dot read me the next integer. Now, if the number is zero, please break. I stop the loop because this is by design. We read numbers until zero is reached. If it is not zero, I have a valid number, which I will sum. Sum is equal to sum plus the next number. And, and we print the current sum. And that's all. Let's see whether this works correctly. Like this, I run this some numbers. I try five, the sum. No, this is number processor. This is the previous uh, problem. I didn't start correctly what I wanted. For example, five, the sum is five. More three, the sum is eight. More 10, the sum is 18. More two, the sum is 20. Zero, goodbye. I can even print here. Goodbye. 
now I start from for example 10 10 more 5 15 0 goodbye and I can start from 0 it's directly goodbye so this is the logic behind it's very clear to be read wow true get the next number if it is 0 stop otherwise zoom and print very very easy uh, to be uh, read and understand this code is very uh, friendly for uh, the user to be for the developers to, to read it to understand it and to support it so I highly prefer this in many situations when we want to repeat something and we are not sure at the start uh, what how many times we can also print something like uh, enter a number or zero for end something like this now I enter five or zero for end fifteen it's twenty oh looks like this is broken Five. Huh. This is a bug in in the IntelliJ idea. The cursor should be here because it stays on the same line. But this is how it works. And I enter finally zero. Goodbye. So this is the idea. If we if we don't have this, we should repeat this to one. If we don't use while true, we should repeat this to. Uh, lines of code here because it should be something like this wow num is not zero yes do you see these lines and these lines are the same we repeat them because we want to say enter a number and we have the exit condition here this program works the same way it's it's the same program in fact but written a little bit differently okay let's run it so i start from uh, if i start from zero it says goodbye if i start from five then ten it will be 15 then zero it says goodbye it works completely the same way but we have repeating code so i highly recommend to avoid this repeating code using this way of organizing your program while true you do something if you have the exit condition break the loop and otherwise execute the loop watch okay so let's go ahead with the infinite while loops uh, this is an extension to what i have already demonstrated you if we use an infinite loop we just we can just use while true but usually this while true is never it never stays with absolute infinite loop it usually has a way to stop it some kind of condition which is checked within the boot loop body and if it happens we enter break we execute break so infinite loops are, are loops where true is used as a loop condition it is something like while true this is an example of infinite loop which is buggy I enter uh, uh, some line while the command I enter a command while the command is not end I print the command what will happen here uh, I never change this command within the loop body so if I enter for example hello this will print hello many times I'll show you I'll demonstrate this to you um, I'll create for example comments and we'll make a main method here I'll need a scanner control C control tab enter control V enter so this will be infinite loop by mistake this is a bug if I enter hello it will say executing hello why because I don't have this one I need to 
enter the next common at the end of this. Uh, sorry. It's the next common copy. So I just need to enter the next common. Now, this will work differently because if I say hello, it will ask me for a next common. For example, go. And if I enter end, this will stop. So this is a fixed variant of the previous problem. So beware that you change in the whoop body this exit condition or just keep while true and uh, add an exit condition like this. While true, I read the command. If it is end break, otherwise I execute the command. This is more clear programming logic and I prefer personally this one. While true, I read the command. If the command is end or stop, please break, exit from the wood. Otherwise, execute the command. It's very, very clear and I'll show you. Wow. True. I enter a command. If the command is end, I'll break. And after that, I'll execute this command and I don't need this one. Let's see whether this works correctly. I say hello. This is the first common. Go. This is the second common. And then this is the last common. If I directly enter end, it just exists. So remember this pattern of organizing programming logic. While true, do something, check for exit condition, do something else. This is the most important thing from today's lesson. Okay, so we are done with the uh, concepts we want to learn today. Now it's your time to work on your homeworks, on your practical coding exercises, because remember, if you want to learn programming, you, want, you need to code every day. You will need to solve problems. You need to learn how to write code to uh, solve problems and to think to invite, invent algorithms and how to write the code to implement them. So it's your time. Uh, you have uh, several exercises with, uh, which should be solved with while loop. Uh, try to solve them, try to write the code and I will be back after a while uh, to show you my solutions. Did you try the, to solve the practical problems for the while loops? Okay, now I will show you my solutions and will help you with these problems and will show you how I'm thinking and how I'm writing the code. And I hope that your solutions are better and uh, or you will learn a new way to solve the same problems. So let's start. The first problem is called sum of digits. Write a program to sum the digits of given number. Uh, we read an integer from the console and we sum is digits and print the sum. For example, if the number is 5,634, we have the first digit 5 plus the second digit 6 plus the third digit 3 and the last digit 4, the sum is 18. Another example, 151 plus 5 plus 0 is 6. Another example, minus 532, 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. This is the concept of summing the digits of a number. Let's solve this problem in Java. Sum digits. I'll create a new class called sum of digits. Oh, sum of digits. Digits. Finally, I uh, typed this correctly. I will create the main method. And now I'll take the scanner from the previous lesson, from the previous problem. Okay, I have already imported the scanner and now I'll read the number. Uh, and num is scanner.next. 
next integer. So int sum number is zero. I'll start from sum zero and I'll see write something like well the number is less is bigger than zero. What I will do, I will take the last digit int last digit equals to number percent n. Why? Because number percent n gives the last digit of the number. For example, if the number is 34501, the last digit is 1. This percent 10 gives the last digit. This is by definition. Okay. And we add it to the sum. Sum plus equals last digit. And then we want to remove the last digit. So number is number number divided by 10. What will happen if we have, for example, the number 1, 2, 6, 7? Uh, and we divide it by 10. It will be 1 to 6.7 if it is floating point division or it will be 1 to 6 if it is integer division. This will be lost. But we have integer division because this is num int and this is int. So we just delete the last digit. And here we take the last digit. Okay. And when we stop, when the number is bigger than zero, and finally we print sum of digits and the sum. Let's see and check whether this works correctly or not. Okay. I enter three. The two, three, nine, four. It's two and three, five and nine, fourteen and four, eighteen. Or uh, one zero 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 four. It should be five. Looks like it works. Five. It works. And minus twenty-five digits Noah a zero. Some of the digits is zero why because it's negative and this one number is bigger than zero this will never execute so what we need is something like if number is less than zero then number is minus number and now it will work correctly for minus 25 because if it, if the number is minus 25 it will become 25 and the algorithm will calculate 7. Or this can be replaced by number equals number uh, of math.abs of, of number. This will work correctly. Minus 25. Or even we can do like this. We take the absolute value, math.ads, of the next integer coming from the console. So this is even better. Let's check minus 25. It works. Uh, 302, 5. 3002. Okay, so we are done with this problem. And let's see the solution I had in mind before the start. Why n is zero? Sum the last digit and remove the last digit. And aha, it directly works with the number n, but it's very very similar to what I have here. But they don't have last digit a separate variable. It's very similar, but this will not work for negative numbers. So we need to. Uh, check for negatives. Does this work for negative 
numbers. I think that this is important to be mentioned because it's because negative numbers are normal to to be here okay so the next problem is called favorite book it's about to write a, about writing a program to guest for a favorite book it reads a book's names and then uh, many books are entered one after another and if we have a match with the favorite book we say book found and stop Otherwise, we say invalid book. See the example. The favorite book is Alice in the Wonder in Wonderland. Uh, we enter a list of books. The first is this Winnie the Pooh. The next is Alice in Wonderland. And for this book, it prints invalid. For the next book, it will also print invalid. Okay. And once we have a match, it says book found and stops the program execution so i'll create a class favorite book with the main method here i'll take this scanner to save some time and i'll say uh, string favorite book equals to scanner dot next next one because I don't want no one I will stop I will say well true I will read the book I will read a book and if the book is equal to the favorite book then I'll print book found and we'll stop the loop. Okay, this is by requirement. Otherwise, I'll print invalid book column and the book name. That's all. I believe I'm done with this problem, but let's see whether it works correctly. My favorite book is Java for beginners, for example. The first book uh, is PHP 7, invalid book. Okay, Java script for dummies. It's invalid. Java for begin beginners book found and it stops. That's all. This is the concept of this problem and I have solved it. So the solution I have in mind before the start of this lesson is just read the favorite book name, read the book while the book is not the favorite book, print invalid and read again. Finally, print book found. It's very similar, but I used the wow through if break pattern instead of this wow whoop, which repeats this one two times because this one and this one is the same and it's repeated two times. This is the means of this solution, but it's correct. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. It's called find min and max. It's about writing a program to find the minimum and maximum uh, numbers among uh, a sequence of integers which starts from uh, which stops when the end in capital letters is entered okay we, and we want to print the biggest and the smallest number this is an example we enter a sequence of numbers and finally we enter end this stops the program after the end command, this result is printed. The minimum number and the max number. Okay, min and max. New Java class, min 
and max number. I'll create a main method. I'll take the scanner because I don't want to print it again. Okay. And I'll say int min is something very big. Integer dot max value. Something very big. And max is integer dot min value. Something very small. The max value is this one. It's given in. And this is the min value. At max value is 2 billions and min value is minus 2 billions. So now I'll say while well, true. Let next one string next one will be scanner dot next one. If the next one is end, I'll break. Otherwise, I'll have int num as integer dot parse int of the next one. And if the num is bigger than current max, then max is num. If the current number is less than the current minimum, then I'll remember it min equals to num. Finally, after the end, I will say the min is and the max is and I print them. I believe that's so, all, but let's test whether this works correctly or not. So, I have 10, minus 5, 200 and Min is fi minus 5, max is 200, works correctly. 5 and works correctly. If I have empty, this will uh, print the min value and max value. I can add an if and say that, well, that we don't have minimum and maximum if we have zero elements. But the idea here is clear. We start from neutral values. Uh, we do a while loop. We read the next one. If it is end, we stop. Otherwise, we have read a number. We parse it. So we take the number value of this next one. And we uh, check for better maximum and better minimum. And we remember them if they are better. And finally, after all input numbers are processed, we print the minimum and maximum. Let's see the solution I had in mind before the start. It's very similar. We start from minimum and maximum uh, neutral values. We have read the next one. Wow, it's not end. We parse the number. We check for better minimum and maximum and remember them. And we read the next one. The minus of this solution is that we have repeating this one. Uh, but generally it's essentially the same. Finally, we print the solution. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. It's called special number. Uh, it's about writing a program to check if a given number is special. And by definition, special numbers are the numbers which are divisible by all of their digits without a remainder. Uh, we read an integer and print num is special or num is not special. Let's see an example. 23 is not special. Why? Because it cannot be divided by 2. Because it's not even. Okay? By these digits. Another example is 204. Can this be divided to 2 to, to first digit? Yes. This will give 102. Can this be divided to 4? Yes. This will give 51. Okay, and can be divided to zero. Mm, we just keep zeros by definition. 
So 204 is special number. It can be divided to all of its non-zero numbers, uh, digits. Okay, special number. Let's solve this problem. Java class, I created Java class called special number. And inside it, I'll create a new method. I'll take the scanner here and in n is equals to scanner dot next in i take the number n okay and num wow num is bigger than is bigger than zero what i'll take is int last digit equals to num percent 10 and num equals to num divided by 10. This is the algorithm to extract the digits. And now I will want to check if the number divided by last digit is not zero. And this will mean that no, this number is not special. So I'll need the boolean is special, which will be true. And if I find a digit such that the number cannot be divided by this digit, I say that is special is false. So a number is special until proven opposite. And I'll break because if a number is not special, if we continue to check the, its other digits, it still will not be special. But here I change the number. I want this original number to, to check whether it's divided by, divisible by certain digits. So because I change this number, I need the original number and also int num equals to math dot abs num uh, so i have num this num will be a variable used to extract the its digits one by one okay so i can even command this and just print the last digit just to see partially solve this problem run if i enter for example minus one to three minus one to three these are the digits this works correct and for each digit uh, for each digit, I uncomment this, I can check whether it breaks the special condition. If the original number percent last digit is not zero, this means that this digit cannot divide the original number, which means that this number is not special. Okay, and finally, if it's special, then I'll print uh, that the original number plus is special. Otherwise, I'll print that it is not special. And let's see what will happen. Run. For example, 204. Ah, division by zero. Oh, I need to check whether this last digit is not zero and this one. Let's see again. 204 special. Minus 204 special.
23 is not special. Let's have other 55 is special because it's divided by 5. One, this number is special, but this is not special because it cannot be divided by 2. 100 should be special because it can be divided by 1. That's all. This is the algorithm. We remember the original number and we take the, the number, extract its last digit and delete this last digit. If we find a digit which is not 0 and which cannot divide the original number, we assume the number is not special. Initially, the number is special. Finally, we print whether the number is special or not. Okay, we are done with this problem and let's see what we had in mind before the start of this project. Uh, in this, this lesson, uh, we read the number, we remember the number in separate copy called non digits. We pass through the digits of the number, we extract the next digit and we check for each digit where the, whether the number divides uh, the digit divides this number or not. And finally we print the final output. It's essentially the same solution which I have already uh, implemented for you. So let's go with the next problem. The next problem is called special bonus. It's about writing a program to apply a 20% bonus for the previous number before certain stop, stop number. Uh, I'll show you the idea here. We have a sub, something called stop number. Uh, we scan the numbers after that and if we find this stop number, a number equals to this, we take the previous one, the previous number before the stop and we multiply this plus 10, 20% which means that we just multiply by 1.20 and in this example we'll give we'll have 36 okay if we don't have the stop number we'll take this one for example if we have uh, only this only one number if we don't have a stop number, we take the last one. And that's all. Special bonus. I'll create a class called special bonus. And I'll write the main method. I'll take the scanner and this maybe. Bonus. If I uh, change this error, this will not work, so I'll need, need to use shift F6, which is rename, bonus, oh, shift F6, bonus, not bonus, bonus, okay, stop number, I'll read the stop number, wow, true, I'll take int next num equals to sca scanner dot next int I take the next number if the next number equals to the stop number then I will break otherwise uh, nothing otherwise. I will break when I find the stop number. If I don't uh, find the stop number, I will read another number. Finally, I'll print the stop number multiplied by 1.2. 20% bigger. And that's all. Let's see whether this works correctly or not. The special stop number now will be 25 and I have some numbers 100, 200, 300. Now I have the stop number 25 and the previous number is 300. It should be multiplied by 
Oh, no, the stop now. Sorry. It should be not the stop num, but this should be the next num. This is a corrected solution. Let's say again, 25 is the stop number. We have 1000, 2000 and 3000. And we have the stop number. And now this 3000 should be multiplied by 1.2. Why? No, not the next num, the previous num. Oh, I'm sorry, I have mistaken again. I will need also the previous num, which initially in pref num will be the stop number. And now the pref num will be this current next num or this will be just num so i have the stop number i have the previous number at the beginning it's this number because we don't have more numbers uh, but we need we read the next number if it is stop num we break and exit from the loop Finally, we remember the, the current number as previous because at the next step here, this previous will be the number before this number. Okay, and now this should work correct. Let's try again. 25 is the stop number, 100, 1000 to 2000, 3000, and we have 25. At this moment, this pref num should be this one. Enter. 3060 is correct. If we have just 25 is a stop number and we have 25, the previous number is 25. So this will be 30, which is 20% more of 25. If we have 1 to 3, 1 to 3, this should be. 30% more than 1 to 3. If we don't have the same number, the stop number, this will never end. We need to enter the stop number. Okay? That's all of this problem. So, let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. I read the stop number. This is by problem definition. I remember the previous number, which initially is this top number because I don't have any other. So I read the, the next number and the previous is obviously the number before that the stop number. Now if it is the stop number, I should stop and print the previous number increased by 20%. And now I change the previous number with the current number because after that I read the next number. So if we have some numbers here and now this is num, this will be the previous number. But when I read the next here, at the next iteration, this will not be interesting. This will be the ref num and this will be the num. So at the end of this iteration, I remember the current number as previous and I read the next. So at each moment in the time, this variable will hold the previous number before this num. Okay. So let's go ahead. This is the printing. Let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called sequence to k plus one. We want to write a program to print the values of a special sequence, which is defined by the number one and two times the previous plus one. Uh, what does this mean? That we have one. The next is two times one plus one. 
which is 3. And the next is 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 7. And the next number is 2 times the previous 7 plus 1, which is 15, etc. So we have 3, 7, 15. The problem statement says that we enter an integer n and we print all sequence number less than or equal to n. For example, for 8, it's 1, 3, 7. For 15, it's 1, 3, 7, 15. Sequence 2k plus 1. I'll create a class called sequence 2k plus 1 because this plus it's invalid as a class name so I'll write it by letters name I'll need this two lines here but this will be n and while num is less than n I'll start with num1 while it is less than n I'll print this number and we'll say number is number multiplied by 2 or 2 times the number plus 1. Finally, no, I don't, uh, I don't need to print anything else. Looks very simple. Let's see whether this works correctly. 8, 1, 3, 7. 15, 1, 3, 7. 7 ah less than or equal 15 it should be 137 15 137 15 if we have something bigger it works correctly as well so we are done with this problem this is the solution while k is less than n we calculate the formula and we print this k very 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 simple Account balance is the next problem. It's about writing a problem to calculate an account balance. We start from balance zero. We read incomes or expenses. Uh, positive numbers are incomes, negatives are uh, expenses. And we print increase the money and decrease the money. Finally, we print the balance. Just see the example, it's easier to understand it. We have account balance zero in the, in the beginning. We uh, get five hundred dollars for example this is increase and the account balance is 500 uh, and uh, in, it's increased by 500 now we have this and we increase by this we have negative value which is money spent so we have decrease by this value in absolute uh, value finally we have end and we need to have this sum. So this is a variant of sum, summing a numbers. If we have summing a numbers, we can change the code and obtain this result. So do we have some numbers? We have until zero. I'll copy this. Control C, Control V. Account balance. Okay, so what I have, balance, 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 I read a number, if it is end, but I need to take the next one, next one, if next one is end, then I will break and will finally print the balance. Balance. Otherwise, I will submit this to the balance and will the next number which the number is something like 
uh, it should be double maybe and this should be also double double num is double dot parse of this next line and here I should say if num is positive then I'll print increase plus the number otherwise I'll print decrease and minus number because if it is minus 80.35 is decreased by the the minus the opposite value of this let's see whether this works initially I have a balance of zero I add ten dollars I increased with them I add more 20 I have 30 now I spent five I'll have 25 and I have 25 looks correct I have empty account and it's zero I have empty account I add 20 dollars I spent 1.5 dollars minus one point uh, sorry minus 1.5 I spent 1.5 now I should have 18.5 uh, and 80.5 looks correct so let's check again I have the balance I read the next line if it is sent I stop otherwise I take the number which is at the next line I increase add it to my balance and I print whether this was increase or decrease and finally I print the balance very simple so this is how it might be also solved but it's very similar I take the input if it is end break I take the amount I add it and I print this solution is exactly what I had created for you few seconds ago okay so this was the last problem and i'm happy to summarize what we have learned today uh, the while loop executes a block of code multiple times uh, while a certain condition is true if the condition is true the loop body is executed again it is checked if the condition is true the loop body is executed and this continues until the loop condition is broken we use for loops when we initially know the numbers of iterations or how many times we want to repeat the loop body. We use while when we don't know how many times we'll repeat the body and when we have certain exit condition. Uh, we can use infinite loops with break in order to impl implement more flexible logic like I have shown you several times where we have while true and we read some data or we take something we check some condition for example uh, we have the common end and we break at this moment after that we process the data we have so we can have while true with if break pattern and this pattern is very useful to organize more complex for loops uh, a more complex while loops. In programming, loops can be nested. This means putting another loop in the body of a loop. We can have several nested loops. We can have a loop in another loop which holds a third loop. And this nesting is natural. For example, a building can have many floors and each floor can have many rooms. In this way, we nest the floors inside the building and the rooms on each floor. If you want to walk around the building and print each of its rooms on each of the floors, we must use nested loops. Let's see how the nested loops work in action and then let's solve some practical exercises that I will give you as homework. Let's do it! 
Today, we'll extend our previous knowledge with some kind of so-called more complex loops with special steps and also with nested loops. Let's start with this more complex loops. So complex loops are four loops which may have a different steps or might have some kind of more strange or unusual logic which goes from one loop step to another to the next loop step. This is a traditional uh, backwards uh, loop. It starts from n down to 1. It starts from a uh, variable i starts from n, for example, 100. It repeats while i is bigger than 1 and it decrements the uh, variable i after each step. This is another example where the step is 2. This is another example where the step is the previous uh, value multiplied by 2. So here the values of k will be the values of k will start from 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32 uh, until it reaches or uh, re until it, re it reaches n or something bigger than n. Okay, and another example is something which divides a number n uh, continuously. It, this is an integer division uh, while it's positive. So, for example, if we start from n25, the next iteration will be 12. The next iteration will be 6, the next iteration will be 3, the next iteration will be uh, 1, and the next iteration will reach 0, and the uh, uh, loop will, will exit at this situation. So this is another way to use a step, a special kind of step calculation process, like this formula, in order to achieve more complex loop logic. Uh, usually the last one might be used to find the number of bits in certain number or number of uh, to, to find the to, to convert a number to a binary form or something like this. Okay, so let's see uh, one example as given as a problem and solution. We want to print the numbers from n down to 1. We read an integer and we print the numbers from n to 1 at a single line. So if we if the input is 100, it should print 199, 98, etc. until 1. If the input is 10, uh, then it will print the numbers 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, uh, so how we can solve this? Let's start IntelliJ IDEA. Yes, we still don't have it. It might take some time because it's very good tool for um, writing Java code and Java projects, but it's a kind of slow because my computer is good enough uh, it's very powerful with uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM, with SSD disk, with uh, four uh, threads uh, and eight, four CPUs and eight threads, etc., etc., etc. But IntelliJ IDEA is very heavy uh, software, so I usually start it preliminary before the lesson, but I. I forgot to do this before the start. So once it will load, I will create first a project for this. It will be nested. It will be called nested loops. And I will put all my code from today in this project because it is better for organizing my uh, projects into a well-named uh, different projects, one corresponding to each lesson we have. Later we will uh, upload all this in GitHub and this will become part of our developer portfolio. So I will create, this is from the while loops, the previous lesson, I will create a new project which will be called something like, uh, it will be common to end up, something like nested loops java. It's good enough. 
this will be the nested loops from the Java lesson. Uh, be sure to have this package as empty because otherwise it will make your job a little bit more complex, but it will still run to certain extent. Uh, I will open this window and now I'm ready to write the code here in the source folder in this main.java class uh, in this file and I'll put my logic here. So my logic will be about the printing the numbers from n down to 1. So I'll create a new class called numbers n down to 1. It should be without hyphens and others because this is a class name. I cannot use hyphens, I cannot use spaces here uh, because this will result in error. Okay, this is my class. I'll put main and we'll create uh, press control space uh, to use this template to simplify my work. And I will uh, define a scanner, scanner, uh, scanner is equals to control space, scanner, it will be new scanner of system dot in okay and then i will say something like in and equals to scanner dot read the next integer now i have the n and i need to organize the four i will use for i which will start from n while a i is bigger or equal than one and the whoop iteration step will be i minus minus. So now I can print i, the whoop variable. Let's try to start this and see what will happen. Uh, I will enter, for example, as input uh, 10, and it should print the numbers from 10 to 1, each at a separate one. Looks like, like it works correctly. 10 until 1. So I'm done with this problem. And the important uh, logic here is how to start from n, i bigger than or equal 1, i minus minus. This is a down to n to 1 for loop. Okay, this is solu the solution I had in mind before the start of this uh, lesson, but. Uh, it is the reverse condition and decremental i minus minus in the loop and in the loop body ah we need to print uh, the at uh, the same line i'm sorry so i will print the number and i will print also uh, a comma and space so let's see what will happen and finally i need to print the a new line at the end but see if I press 10 it will be 10 to 1 but finally if i is bigger than 1 I, I need to put the comma so I will say something like if i is bigger than 1 if if it's not the last number I will pre print a comma after that okay so Let's see what will happen now. If I press enter, for example, 20 as input, the numbers from 20 to 1 inclusively are printed here. So we remove the trailing comma here, which is uh, at the last uh, whoop iteration. Okay, so we are ready. Uh, here the logic is the opposite. We first print the comma and then the next number or either we first print the next number and then the comma. So if we first print the comma, we'll need the comma in all cases uh, except the starting position. If we print the comma after the number, we'll need to print it in all cases except at the last position. So the if here will be different, slightly different, but the logic is very very similar so i hope you can manage to write the similar code yourself uh, and i highly recommend that you write code 
every day. You need to write hundreds of lines, even thousands of lines of code every day for at least one year in order to become a junior uh, candidate developer. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is very similar. It's about writing a program to print the numbers from 1 to n, but with step 3. This is the example. 1, 4, 7, 10, if the input is 10. If the input is 7, 1, 4, 7. If the input is 14, is, the output is 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Numbers 1 to n, step 3. I will copy this. I will say copy and I will say I'll go here at the source and I'll say paste. And the, and the IntelliJ IDEA will ask me for a class name. So I will pre enter numbers uh, 1, 2, and step 3. Because this is what I have. I print the numbers from 1 to n using a step of 3. And I have a copy of this, so the only thing I need to change is the whoop. It starts from 1, it ends if we reach n inclusively, and I have i plus equals 3. And uh, I will print the comma only if i is bigger than one after the first step but after uh, yes i will print the comma before the number but in all steps before the first so here i will not have comma but here i will have after the the one okay so let's check whether this works or not if we have for example seven 1 for 7 works correctly if we have 20. 1 for 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. If we have minus 5, the output will be empty, which is absolutely correct. Okay, so we are ready with this problem solution also. And let's check what I had in mind before the start of this lesson. I had in mind this. I start, I read N, then I make a whoop from one until n with the step of three very similar to what i have written already and if it is not the first step i print a comma then i print the number i and finally i go at the next one because i want to print the output on a single one and go at the next one this is the normal process in console based applications Okay, so we are ready for the next problem. It's called even powers of two. It's about writing a program to print the powers of two which are even. So we read the number n and we print the even powers of two up to two at the power of n. So these are the numbers two at the power of zero, two at the power of two, two at the power of four, two at the power of uh, eight, until two of the power of n. So these are the numbers 1, 4, 16, 64, etc. Until 2 at the power of n. Okay, let's see an example. If we have 10, the numbers will be, will be from 1 to 124. So this looks like a whoop. But the formula to get from one value to the next value is that the next value is four times big, four times bigger than the previous one. So this one here, uh, sorry, this one here is four times of the previous one here. This is the formula. And we can organize a traditional for loop, but we'll not have i plus plus. We'll have i multiplied equals 4. For example, if we have 7, in this another example, we'll have the numbers from 1 to 64. Okay, even powers of 2. 
To solve this problem, I'll create a new class called even powers of two. And I will put a main method here. I'll press control tab to go at the previous uh, class and copy these two lines of code because I, I don't want to type them again. And now I have n, so I will say something like uh, p uh, long. I will use long because uh, 2 raised to some power is uh, increasing very fast, so it might overflow in, in just a few steps. Uh, I'll show you. So we have long p, it starts from 1 because 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so I will start from uh, p equals 1. Oh, I will don't, don't need this. I'm sorry. Uh, until I reach this, no, no, I will need to print all the numbers less than or equal n. I think I will not use uh, 2 to the power of n, I read the number n. Okay, so I will need to repeat this n times. Okay, so I'll have for i uh, from 1 to n and I'll have i plus plus, i plus plus and I'll have print p and p equals p multiplied by 2 by 2 or by 4 which is the same uh, and if it is 1 if we if if p is 2 at the power of 0 the next the next p will be p multiplied uh, at the uh, the at this power 2, 10, 10, 2 at the power of 4, then to the power of 6, etc. So this is the formula and I will repeat this n times. Okay. So let's check whether this works correctly or not. I'll run this and if I have 10, it's 1, 4, 16, but it should stop at 1 at the power of 10. But here I have a step of 2. So here I will need to have a step of 2. Why? Because I multiply by 2 and then again I multiply by 2. So I, I obtain 2 to the power of 1, then 2 to the power of, okay, it's from 0, 2 to the power of 0, then 2, then 4, then 6, etc. So I will need to have a step of 2 here. The, the step is 2 and until I reach n. Let me check again. If I have 10, okay, I need to have 10 and inclusively. If I have 10, it will print the numbers from 1 to 124. If I have 7, it should be until 64. Works correctly. 
So I believe we are ready with this problem. Ah, I wanted to show you what will happen if we have big uh, pow power. It's something like 2 raised to the power of 50. I think this is not big enough, but if I have 1000, see what happens. It works correctly until it overflows. Here, the next num this number is incorrect and this is also incorrect. Here we have overflow and until this number, all the values are correct. If we want to solve this, we may use the big... Okay, I can show you because this is interesting. Instead of a uh, of p long, I can use big integer is new big integer of one. Uh, okay, let's see how I can use this big integer dot one or dot value of one. And then I should say p equals to p dot multiply by four. Dot multiply of big integer dot value of four. Let me see whether this works or not. If I have 10, it works correctly. If I have 1000, it still works correctly. You can check. See why this works correctly? Because this class big integer holds integer values uh, with unlimited number of digits. So it might be used for cryptography purposes or other mathematical or physical calculations where we need very big numbers. So this is the output here. This is just a small trick. You don't need to know it at this stage of your um, development as a software engineer, but uh, in many languages we have such classes which allow us to use more uh, accurate uh, integers because the int, long, float, double and others are limited to certain number of digits. Okay, let's go ahead. This is the um, solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. I start from num1, which is 2 raised to the power of 0. Uh, I run the loop from 0 to n with step 2 because at each step we uh, multiply the num by 2 and then again by 2 and uh, we use this trick to use the comma and the solution is very similar like this. So I can even fix this print p and then if p is bigger than if i is bigger than 0 then i will print also a comma and now if i need to print the numbers from 1 to 30 2 to the power of uh, even powers uh, this is the output okay let's go ahead with the next concept it's called do while loops. The do while loop is something like the while loop, but the exit condition is at the end. See this example. It says, start a loop, please repeat this, and finally check this condition. If it is true, repeat the loop body again. If it is false, just exit the loop. Very similar to the while loop, but at the while loop, we have the wood body uh, executed zero or more times. And here we have the wood body executed 
at least once. So whoop uses an exit condition at the start and do whoops use an exit condition at the end. So it's a wow uses an entrance condition, whoop condition, and this uses a post whoop condition, post whoop exit condition. Okay, so but the logic is very, very uh, simple. I will demonstrate this to you. So here I can start from int num s1 to uh, print the number. Oh, num equals to one. Print the number. Number is multiplied by two. And wow, the number is less than or equal 124, for example. So what will be the input? It will be one, two, four, eight, etc. until 224. But this will be always executed at least one because there is no check at the start of the loop. There is, there is a check at the end of the loop. So this is the do while loop in programming. It's the same in many programming languages like C++, C, C Sharp, JavaScript and others. Okay, let's go ahead with the main topic for today. The main topic for today is about nesting whoops, nesting one, one whoop inside another whoop. Let's start from a real world example. Imagine how the digital clock works or the or other digital screens. It works as a sequence of iterations. So assume this is the clock or this is the uh, car fuel indicator or uh, some kind of measurement. Uh, if one second passes, this will increase the rightmost digit. After one more second, it will increase the rightmost digit. After this will repeat at each second, for example, once it reaches nine, it works as the previous iteration, just increase the rightmost digit. But when the rightmost digit is increased and reaches 10, it becomes zero and the left digits from it, from it it's increased. So uh, we'll have this from 0009, we'll have 00101010. 10. So this is a nested loop. Why? Well, because we have this running from 1 until 9. Then, when this reaches 9, this runs from 0 until 9. Uh, this also works from, sorry, from 0. Okay? Then, when these two loops are complete, this will run from 0 to 9 and this will become uh, here will have 1 and this will be 0. So we have whoop inside a whoop. It will be something like uh, this one. We'll have, sorry, oh, <laughs> blue color. Uh, 1 two, three, four, until nine. Okay, and we have one at the start because, okay, let's again, uh, we have zero at the start, followed by one, two, three, until nine. Then we'll have one of the start, followed by one, two, three, until 9. Then we'll have 2 at the start, followed by, uh, sorry, 0 to 9. It should start from 0 here also. It's my mistake. And this continues until this reaches 9, followed by the numbers from 0 to 9. So this is a loop. 
it's from 0 to 9. But this is another whoop from 0 to 9. So we have whoop inside the whoop. And here we might have the third digit, which also starts from 0 to 9, etc, etc, etc. So the concept here is that we, in order to run this, we might need four whoops, one inside another. And I will show you in practice how to implement this in Java. Okay, so nested whoops by concept are whoops staying one inside another. Whoop inside the whoop. This is a nested whoop. Okay, so we can nest whoops inside other whoops. So if we have something which runs from the first row to row number n, in this situation n is 3, 1, 2, 3. If we have, for example, a building and it has four uh, of 1, then it has four 2, and then it has four Three. This is from one to three a whoop. Inside we may have even whoop which runs through the uh, locations or columns inside these rows. So we can print the column from one to n, and we use uh, a, an inner whoop. So. Usually, in the whoop body, we can put anything, right? Some logic, some variables. Why not putting another whoop? So, nested whoops are whoops which execute some programming logic, which also holds a whoop. So, a typical example is to iterate from the first to the last row, for example, in the cinema hall, and then to iterate from the first to the last count. And currently we just print stars like this and the output is something like this. So we'll have an iteration one, two, uh, row one, row two, row three. And for each one we'll have one, column one, two, three. For the second row we'll have column one, two, three. And for the third row we'll have column one, two, three, okay? Let's see this in action. So I'll clear this code to write the whoop for i. Uh, this will be row. It's from 0 to 5, for an example. Or from 1 to 5 inclusively. So we can uh, write something like row equals plus row. This is a normal whoop. It will print the numbers from 1 to 5 here. Okay, but instead of printing these numbers here, what will happen if we print uh, the counts from the numbers 1 to 5 here? We can either print here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay, let's see, or we can use replace this with a whoop for column start from 1 to 5 and we print space plus column. It's the same, but now it's with a nested whoop. So we have whoop which repeats, uh, okay, after that we'll need a new line. We have a whoop which repeats five time, times and inside it we print the numbers from one to five. So first time, second, third, fourth, fifth. At each row we execute this. So I can also print uh, something like uh, row plus row plus column to see what happens. We'll have row 1, the numbers 
from 1 to 5. Row 2, the numbers from 1 to 5. Row 3, from numbers 1 to 5. We can replace this 5 by n. And now we can have int n is 5. This will be the same logic here. Okay. But we can change this with 4. And now we'll have 4 rows and 4 columns in each row. Okay. And instead of this, we can print, instead of code, we can print an asterisk here. And we'll print a square of n by n stars. Okay. Yes. I can command this and it will be the, the square from the example of the previous slide. This one. If n is 3, this is something like this. So this is how whoops work. Inside the whoop we may have other whoop, which is obvious. We didn't need to teach you that this is possible because we already explained that inside the whoop we can pay, put any block of code which may also hold a whoop. So let's go ahead uh, with some more concepts. Nested whoops are several whoops placed one inside another. And nested whoops are used to execute multiple times certain action which itself executes multiple actions. So, for example, we may need to build a building holding n five floors and at each floor we may need to build five rooms. So, we need for the first floor one, two, three, four, five rooms. For the second floor, one, two, three, four, five rooms. For the third floor, one, two, three, four, five rooms. So these are actions built a floor, which consists of several other actions built a room. Okay, so we sometimes need to implement more complex calculations and program logic, and we may need nested loops. Usually, when we have a table holding rows and columns, we need nested loops. This is a very common indication. If we need a tabular data, tables, we need nested loops. If we have a cubic data, something like this, this, and this, building of three floors, each holding many uh, rooms uh, at several, how to say, if we have multiple tables, in fact, we may need three nested loops. Uh, so I'll show you this in practice. But generally, nested loops are loops inside loops. A typical situation to have rows holding columns. We have multiple rows and each row holds multiple columns. Let's see this example. In this example, we have floor from 1 to n, we have row from 1 to n, and we have column from 1 to n. We have, uh, for example, assume we have a cinema consisting of three floors. At each floor, we have uh, a cinema WAP, a cinema hole, where we have n by n rows and columns. So let's see this, I'll show you. Uh, we may have a for loop which whoops the floor number from 1 to n. Inside it, we may have another whoop which whoops the row number from 1 to n. And finally, we may have a, another whoop which whoops the column, changes the column 
consequently from 1 to n. Finally, inside the whoop body, we may print uh, the four number plus a space plus the row number plus a space plus the column number. Let's see how this works for n3. Okay, first four, first row, first column, first four, first row, last column. So if we have an four and each whoop is from zero to nine, from zero to nine, we'll have something sim very similar to our example before. Did you remember uh, the example? Let's go back. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. If it reaches 9, the next is 10. Then 11, 12, etc. It's a counter. Okay? If we reach 0, it increases the previous. So this is how nested whoops work in action. You need to have just some practice. By theory, they are nothing complex, but when you practice, you need to just think uh, in the terms of nested whoops. Okay, so remember to, have to use different variable names. Sometimes people uh, are trying to copy copy this, copy and paste this, and see what happens. This variable is already defined. So the nested whoop cannot have the same whoop variable like the it outer whoop. This, in, in by the way, this is called inner whoop, and this is called outer whoop but this whoop here is inner this whoop here is inner regarding this one so if we have just two whoops like this we have inner this is the inner whoop and we have outer whoop which is obvious Let's go ahead with some examples of how to nest for whoops inside other for whoops. I'll start with the concept. The concept is that we have for whoop which holds initialization, condition, whoop condition, and increment formula. The outer whoop, the inner whoop holds the same. And inside this nested whoops, we have some comments, some statements which are located here, okay? We may have some comments here as well, which are part of this, out of the body of the outer whoop. Okay, let's see this in practice. We want to print a table consisting of three rows, each holding two columns. So we iterate uh, for the variable r from 1 until the number of rows. So it will iterate like this, 1, 2, 3. Inside it, I want for 1 to have the numbers here from 1 until 2. For 2, I want to have the numbers 1 and 2. And for 3, I want to have again the numbers 1 and 2. Because I want to have 3 rows, each holding 1 column, uh, 2 columns. Okay? So here I will print the row number. And then 
this will print something like this. Then I will iterate from one to the number of columns and we'll print the columns with a leading space here. And this will print this. The inner loop here will produce this. The outer loop here will produce this. At the next iteration, what will happen? This will be R will be now two, and the second row will be printed. In the second row, we need to print the columns one and two. They will be printed. At the next iteration here, the next row number three will be printed. And for inside it, this loop will print columns one and column two. So this is how this works. This is a very good example of nested logic and you can see it many times. For example, if we have a hotel, we have a uh, few floors, for example, five floors. And in each floor, we have, for example, 20 rooms. At the first floor, we have 20 rooms. At the second floor, we have 20 rooms. At the third floor, we have 20 rooms. If you want to clean all the rooms in the hotel, we need to repeat for each floor, please, for each room, clean the room. We need to go to the first floor, clean the rooms one by one, go to the second floor, clean the rooms one by one, go to the third floor, clean the rooms one by one. So this is a very good real world example of nested for loops. And this is an extremely good explanation of how to use this and why they are needed and how to code these nested loops in Java. Okay, let's solve our first problem uh, using nested loops for today. It's about writing a program to print a triangle of stars just like shown below. If the size is 5, we print 1 star, two stars, etc. until five is reached. First one, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So we need to have a whoop from one to five. And for each row, we need to print a, num a stars corresponding to this row number. For example, at row five, we need to print five stars. If the input is seven, if this size is seven, the output should be this one. One star, two star, until seven stars. So let's solve this problem. Triangle of stars. We go in IntelliJ idea. I will delete this because it's it cannot compile. Uh, I'll create a new class, triangle of stars stars okay i'll have the main method i'll copy these two lines because i don't want to write them again it will take time so i'll start from i need the for item plate i'll start from one until i reach n I plus plus. So I need to print I I stars. Run. For example, if we have five here, I need to print one star, two stars until five. How do we print five stars? I stars. How do we print this number of stars? We make a whoop. I can change this variable. Control R R. No. Shift F six. Yes. Stars count. Or it might be one. And the first one, second one, third one. I print one stars 
and here I'll need for i, I'll start from 1 to 1, 1 times, I repeat printing a star followed by space and after that I'll print a new line. Let's see whether this works or not. This prints 5 stars and this goes on the next one because uh, after we print 1 star we need to go there. Oh, we don't need the spaces. Okay, but it's exactly the same thing. Just the output will be slightly different. For input 7, I will have 1 star, 2 stars, 3 stars, etc. We can trace this through the debugger, debug, and you will see what will happen. Now the one is one. Hey, please stop here. Okay. Debugger. F8. F8. Looks like something is broken. Oh, I needed to enter N. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I need to debug it again. Uh, I just needed to enter this 5, for example. So we have F8. Now wine is 1. And we print 1 star. And this loop ends. Now wine is 2. We need to print 1 star, then 1 more star. And then we print this. At the third one, we will repeat this three times. Three stars are printed. We go to the next one. At the next one, fourth, we need to print one, two, three, four times a star, then a new one. And at the final one, five, we print one, two, three, four, five stars. Then we go to the next one. And now this loop stops and the program is done also stops so this is how this works through the debugger generally exactly what we might need to expect might want to expect okay so this is the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson I iterate from one I enter the size and I, and I change the row from one to size for example from one to five and at each row I iterate the count from 1 to row. It's not from 1 to n, but it's from 1 to the previous one. So this serves as end, uh, end value for the internal or nested loop. And after I have printed all the starts for, for the current one, I go to the next line because otherwise all the stars will be printed at a single line. It will be just a sequence of stars. So let's say a few words about nested while loops. It's very similar. Like we can have for loop inside another for loop, we may have a while loop inside another while loop. This is how it works as a con concept. We have outer loop. While something is true, please repeat. Inside, while something different is some other condition is true, repeat. And we execute here some statements. We may also here execute some statements and before the loop here. And here we may have also some statements. So we have we may have statements, wow whoop, then other statements. Here we may have also something, then another wow whoop, then another thing. So we can nest uh, wow whoops everywhere where we can have a statement. 
for example, inside, inside if, inside for, inside wow. Let's see an example. We want to print rows. We have row number changing from one until two. And we print it. Then we have a nested loop which changes the column from one to three. And we print the column number. So for the first one, we have an inner loop which prints columns one, two, three. Intentionally, we have a space here in order to uh, visually demonstrate that this thing is inside the outer loop row. Then we increase the row number and now the row number and after that the loop repeats. Now the row number is two, it will be printed and this code will loop from one to three and will print column one, column two, column three. It is very similar with what we achieved with nested for loops, but this is done with while loops. I just wanted to show you that we can put one while loop inside another while loop. Let's solve the previous problem, triangle of stars, but it's the same problem, but using while loops, okay? I will copy this triangle of stars, control C, control V, while loop. For example, this will be the name, triangle of stars, while loop. Okay, so I read the input and I say int one starts from one. While one is not reached or is not is within the range of n, if the line is one, two, three, four, it's not exceeded n, I will print print one stars. Let's see this. Iterate, oh, five. And now I don't increase this one. IntelliJ idea says, oh, you don't change this inside the loop. You might fall into infinite loop. I, may, I noticed this, but I wanted to show this to you. So one plus plus will be needed at the end of this loop. Okay, now I want to have five lines. At the first one, I want to print one star. At the second, I want to print two stars. At the third, I want to print three stars, etc., etc., etc. So I need to change this with something different, which will be uh, let stars, uh, not let, <laughs> in stars is one. While stars is bigger than zero, I will print a star, then stars minus minus. I want to print this amount of stars here. So I start from this, I print a star and decrease the number. Later, I print, I go to the next one. Now, let's see whether this works or not. Five. Oh, it doesn't work from one. Why? Two, three, four, five, six. While is bigger than zero, I will print it. Okay, five. One, two, three, four, five. Works absolutely correct. 
see if we forget to go the next one. We print one star, then we print two stars, three stars, four stars and five stars. And if we forget to go the next one, the output will be this. All the stars stay on the same one. So please don't forget. Finally, our complete solution is this code. We start from one line, one, one, then we go to one, two, one, three, until we reach one n, and we print one number of stars of the first one, one number of stars of the second one, etc., and we increase. These are nested while wow loops. Wow loop staying in the body of another while wow loop. If we think of this while wow loop as a black box, so we don't know what's inside, we can construct this outside loop separately, then construct this logic separately just like it is here for example not here but just like it is something separate and then we can combine them together so this is how it works i believe once you get some more experience it will be easy for you to work with nested loops it's not important whether these are for loops, while wow loops or other loops. It's the same concept. This is an example. We read a variable called height, which means how many rows we have. We start from row 1 until row height. One, row 1, 2, 3, 4. We start from column 0. And we have this. Oh, this is something uh, interesting. I may have wow star minus minus is bigger than zero, then print this, which is slightly less cold. So I decrease the number of stars, and if they are bigger than zero, I print asterisk. But I'm not sure this is correct. Let's check five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I decrement here in the while loop and then compare whether this is bigger or not. It might be like this also. But the previous one looks better for me more readable and more understandable so this is the solution which i had in mind before the start of this lesson of course we may have for loop here of course we may have for loop here as well because we know in advance how many times we will repeat this block of code but in this example, I want to demonstrate how to use nested while loops. That's why I solved this problem like this. Okay, let's show how we can nest while wow and for loops depending on what is more convenient in the current situation. So we can have a for inside a while, we can have a while loop inside for loop, or we may have while loop inside two nested for whoops. Let's see this. We want to print, uh, to implement a sum of digits calculator. This program reads integers until end is entered. So it reads, for example, 5, 10, 20. Finally, if you put end, the program will stop. For each integer, we need to calculate the sum of its digits and print them. Finally, we print goodbye. This is an example. We enter 157. The 
sum of digits is 1 plus 5 plus 7, which is 13. The next number is 99, the sum of digits is 18. 5, the sum of digits is 5. 438, it's 4 plus 3 plus 8, it's 15. And when AND is entered, the outer loop stops and says goodbye. This is what we need, sum of digits calculator. New class called sum of digits calculator. Okay. I will put the main method here and I'll have something like well true. I read string input, I'll read the input as a scanner dot next line. Scanner dot next line. I read text because it might the next line might hold either a number or a text. I'm not sure what it holds. So I read the text and if the text is end, I will break from the loop. I will stop the loop. And I will print goodbye at the end. Here I will do I'll process the input. See what happened. I created a whoop which reads a one. If it reaches end, it stops and then processes the read input. Finally, it says goodbye. This is a portion from the problem. We have, for example, we enter one, two, five. We need to process this input to calculate the number, uh, the sum of its digits and print them. Then I enter uh, hello, it proce should process hello. Then I enter 5372, it should process this. Finally, I enter end and it stops the loop and says goodbye. Now I need to change this with the real logic to calculate sum of digits in sum of digits as zero. I need to have the number and num equals to integer dot parse int of this input. So I read the next one. If it is the command end, I stop. Otherwise it should be a number. I parse this number. For example, this might be this number, 157. I parse this number and I want to sum their digits. So I say, wow, uh, num is bigger than zero. Sum of digits is increased by the num percent n, the last digit of the number and num equals to num per, uh, divided to 10. I delete the last digits while num is bigger than zero. And I need to have mat.abs. I don't explain this in bigger details because we already have solved this problem in the previous lessons. Do you remember this? We had num sum of digits many times. We have solved this problem already. The idea is that we take the last digit, we sum it and we delete the last digit. For example, if the number is 4, 5, 2, the last digit is 2, we'll sum it here and the number will be divided by 10 as integer division and will become 45. Then it will become 4 that it will become 0 and the loop will stop. Okay, so finally I print 
down sum of digits and I print the sum of digits. And I use math ABS because this algorithm doesn't work for negative values. So I need just to remove the minus if the value is negative. So I have the previous logic extended with this. This is the inner loop. And this is the previous logic which already was tested and it works correctly. We played with them. It's very important that when you solve a little bit more complex problems, to solve them step by step, to divide them into sub problems. The first problem is continuously reading a number until end is reached. This is the first problem. The next problem is for given number, calculate and print the number of its digits. For given number num, calculate and print the number of digits. This is a sub problem. So we have one problem, this one, and a nested problem inside it. In fact, we have two separate problems to solve and we need to combine them. And this is our solution. Run. It's better to write the code step by step, problem by problem, not hold all the code uh, from as one shot. Okay, if we have, for example, 134, it's 8. It's correct. If we have 55, it's 10. If we have 20, it's 2, the sum of digits. If we have end, it's goodbye. Works absolutely correctly. Let's check for negatives. Minus 45, it should be 9. 0, it should be 0. And minus 1, it should be 1. And end, it should be goodbye. Works correctly, so we are done with this problem. Let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. While true, read the next one. If it is sent, break. Later, calculate the sum of digits, like I have shown you, and finally print goodbye. Here, the calculation of the sum of digits is a little bit more interesting. Oh, I need to put this here because it's, how to say, a little bit more tricky. Uh, but generally, it should be like this. This is the whoop which we use. We start from the input number. While it is bigger than zero, we divide it by 10. And at each iteration, we sum up the last digit to the current sum. This is what we have. Uh, it's very interesting. It's a uh, this three wines, this wine, two wines and this wine are combined in the for loop here. This for loop combines this wine. So it's really interesting, but we need to be careful with this code because it might be misleading. But it's correct, you can check it yourself. So, the concept is again very similar. We have one loop, inside it we have another loop which does some calculation. We read the next one, we check for break, then we take the input number, we sum its digits and we print the output. And we repeat this again and again until end is reached. Let's go ahead. Uh, we don't have more new things for this lesson. Now it's your time to solve the problems. You have wife exercises session and I highly recommend that you go through the homework exercises and you solve them yourself. You learn by coding. Please write code. Please try to solve these problems. And finally, if you have problems, if you have difficulties, watch my solutions. I will show you my solutions after a while. 
but first do your best to solve these problems yourself. Then you may watch my video just to check your solutions with my solution and think about which is better. You may come up with a better solution than me and this is obvious because uh, different people think differently so some solutions might be more easy and obvious for you some can be more obvious for me some are easier to understand and shorter and more smart some are not so give some time and on practice try to solve the homeworks and i will be back after a while to show you my solutions now it's time to show you my solutions for the practical problems which you had as assignment to work on. So let's start with the first problem which is called building. It's about writing a program to print a table representing a building like it is shown below. So the odd floors hold apartments which are numbered like this A10, A11, A. 12 etc they start with the letter a and they have uh, two other uh, digits i will explain later so even floors hold offices in a similar fashion and the last floor holds large apartments which are l60 l61 l62 etc uh, you will see the example so the identifiers consist of type which may be a apartment o office or l uh, large apartment followed by the floor number followed by, by the mm, office number or apartment or, or yes office or apartment number so we have a like the type Floor, for example, for seven, and apartment number, for example, twelve. It may be a seven twelve. So this is concatenated, and this is an example. So if we have four floors here, and it's for one, for two, for three, for four, and we have one, two, three, four, five six apartments per floor uh, at the ground floor we have apartments at the next floor we have offices it's odd for for one it's old so it holds apartments uh, the next second floor it's even it holds offices office two zero two one etc 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 and the Next four is apartments, the next is offices, and the final last four, it's L, large offices. So your goal is to print a table like this for given number of floors. Floors, for example, floors here are four, and given number of um, properties, Per, per four which is here six so if we have four and six the output will be this one okay so this is an example mm, as input we take the count of fours and count of estates per four and the output is the building one rectangular temp table of estates this is an example six four six fours and four uh, estates per four this is the output uh, okay, so let's solve this problem building. I'll open my nested whoops, okay? Uh, here, my nested whoops project in the IntelliJ idea, and I'll create a new class called building table, for example, or table of building. So, the main method will hold my scanner, then, uh, and it's, it's something in the clipboard, my scanner, then it will 
uh, hold something like uh, int force equals to scanner dot next next int later int uh, states per four equals to scanner dot next int and we'll have a for loop which will start from for for one until four reaches the force num count and inside this loop we'll have another loop which will be for the state from zero until the states per four minus one see the states here are six so this is from zero uh, are four this is from zero until three from zero until this this number minus one okay and inside i'll check that if we should check for last for if uh, i can do something like string uh, type equals to apartment but if the oh it's not for six six it should be four sorry okay if the four percent two is zero this is even four then the type should be office odd is apartment even is office it's o even four four mm. office apartment and if the four is equal to number of fours I will remake uh, rename this number of fours if it is equal to number of fours so this is the last four the type should be L which is the last four large apartment L office O and apartment A okay so now we have the why this is under I don't know why it is under uh, under underlined okay so next I just need to print the type plus the for plus the estate number and after that print one space and once we pass through all the states of the four we need to print an empty one I believe I'm ready with this problem so let's check whether it is correct or not 6 4 it should be let's see if it is 6 4 from A 10 to L 16 oh this is not the correct one because the last four is in fact haha <laughs> it is not like this the last four is for one so I think we should 
start from the number of words until one in the down direction so because we will first print the last four then this four then this four and this will fix the book i have six four l60 to l63 l60 to l63 a50 all 40 to 43 a30, 20, a10, and 20, all 20, a10 works absolutely correct. So I believe I'm ready with this problem. And let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. I read the, the fours and the rooms per four. And I create a four loop starting from the fours until one the outer whoops which iterates through the force then the inner whoop iterates through the rooms and i check if the four if we are at the last four we print l and the four in the room number if we have even four otherwise this is else if we'll print the office finally otherwise we'll print apartment and this is very simple i believe and we print a new line after we print all the rooms from the current floor so we generally print the table uh one by one and at each one we print column by column the outer loop goes through the table lines table rows the floors and the inner whoop iterates through the rooms which are the columns inside the um, counts inside our um, for the columns in the table in the output table okay so we're ready for the next problem which is called stupid password write the program to generate all possible password consisting of the following three parts the first first part is even number in the range to between 2 and n even number the second is odd number in the range from 1 to n and the third is product of the first two hmm. really stupid passwords this is an example 4312 4 is even number this is odd number and this is uh, 12 which is, is the product of the previous two numbers so this is an what we get as input we take as input the number n and the output should hold all possible passwords from the first to the last these are the passwords we have one one uh, no we have 11 so we have uh, this two one this is uh odd number uh, even number from 2 to n this is odd number and this is the product we have 2 3 and 6 we have 2 5 and 10 etc and finally at the end we have 10 we have 11 and the product 110 okay so let's check uh, this is for 5 let's solve this stupid passwords uh, assignment let's create a new class called stupid passwords generator because what is this this is a generator of stupid passwords so it answers very well on the question what's this was this class I'll put the main method I'll take the scanner and this from the previous one from the previous problem and this is n so I read the input data and I'll need a for loop from one let's go back to the uh, problem statement 
even numbers in the range from 2 to n. Even number from 2 until n with i plus equals 2 because it should go through uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so this should be named better. First num. Later, we'll have, I can copy this. Uh, second number from 1 to n with step 2 because it's odd number from 1 to n. It is again with step 2. It should be 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay. And finally, long multiplication equals to first num multiplied by second num. And we print the first num. Uh, it should start with space. Otherwise, if we say first num plus second num plus third uh, plus the multiplication of them, this is a number plus number plus number. The result will be a number, right? I'll, I'll show you. This is five. Five. <laughs> It is 5, but it should be 2, 1, 2. It is 2 plus 1 plus 2. <laughs> so I need to have empty string plus this. The result will be string. Plus this. The result will be this. string. And plus this. The result will be this. So these three numbers will be appended as text. Let's see again. Well, oh. 5, we have this, 2, 1, 2, and the final is 4, 5, 20, okay? And I need to print them on the same line, plus space, I don't need this, plus space, and maybe finally I need to go at the new line. Let's check again whether this works correctly. 5, 6 numbers and they look exactly the same like the others. And for 11 the numbers are this. Works absolutely correct. So we are happy to have solved this problem so let's see the solution i had in mind before the start of this project it's called stupid passwords i have the even number from 2 to n with step 2 from 2 until n with step of 2 the nested loop is for the odd number from 1 until n with step 2 and inside I print using a formatting strings. I print just three numbers. First number, then second number, then third number, then space. And I repeat this many times in the nested loop. So I print the even number, the odd number and their product. Okay, so both solutions are correct. And the difference is that we calculate this in a separate variable in my solution and also the way we print this is slightly different. But the algorithm is in fact the same. Okay, the next problem from your homework and exercises is called magic numbers. It's about finding all three digit magic numbers of order n and by definition a, a number is called magic of order n if the product of its digits is n for example if uh, if we have one the output should be this if we have three the output should be this and how we, we can interpret it this is uh, 
this consists of three uh, digits first digit second digit third digit and the the product of its digits it's n so this is equal to one multiplied by one by one which is one this is one multiplied by one by three which is three and this three is the same like this three so we enter this and we want to find all uh, sequences of three digits which means a number from zero to nine which when multiplied result in this number okay so magic numbers let's see new class magic numbers generator will be the name of the class because it will generate mag magic number numbers and i'll take again these two ones because they are exactly the same like in the previous um, problem so let's have the first digit for the first digit d1 should be from 1 until n it cannot be 0 because if it is 0 uh, this will not be three digit number for example if we have 1 to 3 this is three digits but if we have 0 23 this is 23 which is two digit number so it, sh it should start from one the second should start from the second digit should be from zero until 10 9 sorry this is from one to nine not to n and the second uh the third d3 uh, the third digit it should be okay the product of its digits it's and the third digit is from 0 to 9 okay and if d1 multiplied by d2 by d3 if the product of the digit is and then I print this number I'll use print f with this pattern percent t percent d percent t d1 d2 d3 let's see whether this works or not for three the output should be this I have three oh i don't have this new one here let's try again okay three sorry this was a mistake 113 131 311 works correct let's have six. Oh, we have more combinations here these three multiplied this three multiplied and this three multiplied and this three multiplied result in six i can have mm, If I have 12, there are lots of combinations. If I have 21, I have. But if I have some prime number, like 7, it should be only 1 and 7. If I have a prime number like 19, it's empty. If I have 0, it still has some solutions all the numbers which hold zero okay so we are done with this problem and let's see the solution i had in mind before the start the first digit is a whoop from one to nine the second digit is a whoop from zero to nine the third uh, nested whoop is from zero to nine and if we multiply these three digits and there have a value of n we print these three digits joined together one after another 
exactly the same solution which I wrote just now. Travel savings. It's about writing a, a problem, or writing a, a program which calculates the money collection from multiple travel destinations. I'll show you the example. So we read the destination and the budget. For example, I want to go to Bali and my budget is 5000. And many times I read the program should read some amounts of collected or saved money until the money are enough. So the idea is that uh, I want to go to Bali. Uh, sorry, to Bali, for example. It will cost, for example, 5000. But I don't have 5000. I save once 2000. Then I save the next month 1050. Then I save 3000. And if I zoom these numbers, there will be more than or equal to the budget I need to go to Bali. So the program will accept these values, will sum them, and when I'm ready, it will say, you are ready, please go to Bali. After that, it will read another destination, for example, Mexico, and Mexico might cost, for example, 4,000. And I again collect, collect, collect money, and when I'm, the money are enough, I go to Mexico and I start from zero here. See the example. We print uh, after a while. We print collected sum where the sum is the uh, sum which is collected until this moment or going to destination and we read another destination and budget after uh, all the money are collected. Finally, if the destination entered is end, this will end the program. So, looks like we have two nested loops. First, we read the destination, we do something, and we read another destination until we reach end. And for each destination, we collect money. I'll show you the example. So, we enter Bali, and the budget for Bali is 3,500 in this example. The first savings entered is 800. So, we have collected 800 starting from zero for the Bali budget. Later, we collect or save more 1,800. So, together, we have this sum is 2600. It's still less than the required budget 3500. So we need to collect more money. At the next month or at the next moment we collect more 1000. So we reach 3600 which is enough to visit Bali according to our planned budget. So we are going to Bali. And so we have a whoop and this is an inner whoop. For the next destination we enter Brazil. We want to go to Brazil, it's more expensive for 1600 and we collect 5000 and they are enough from the first shot. So we collected this and we are going to Brazil. Finally, we press end, and it's enough. Did you have goodbye? No, we didn't have goodbye. So when we press end, this stops. So we have this, this, and this as the outer loop, and we have inner loop here and inner loop here because we enter destination and we collect multiple time, times money. We enter another destination and we collect multiple times money. 
we have another destination and we collect multiple times money. Finally, we print AND and the outer loops loop should stop. Okay, I will show you a solution. I'll write one now. It's called travel money savings. For example, it's the problem about saving money for travel. It's a good, good enough name. I'll another uh, again take the scanner from the previous problem, the previous solution, and now I'll do something like this. Wow, true. Wow, it's true. I'll do the following: string destination equals to scanner dot next line. I'll read the next line. If the destination is end, I'll break. Otherwise, here I will collect money and will enter the destination again. Okay. But for each destination, I enter double budget the budget is something like table dot parse of scanner dot next one I can't use scanner dot next double because it cannot be mixed with next one do you remember if you use next one you should use only next line. You cannot mix with next into next double. That's why I read the data like this. So I have the budget and collected sum starts from zero. And I say, wow, the collected sum is less than the budget. I will do what? I will collect money. Money or saved amount. And collected sum will be increased with the saved amount. And once the collected sum reaches the budgets or over uh, or becomes bigger than the budget it should be done it should be something like uh, going to and the destination but before that i'll print the collected money something like collected and the sum of the collected money until now okay hmm looks like it's correct but i'm not sure so this is the outer uh, loop which holds an inner loop enters a destination if it is sent, this should stop. We collect the money and after we have collected the money, we say going to a destination and we enter another destination. But the collect money collection process starts from money zero until it reaches the budget which is read at, for each destination. Let's just check whether this works correctly or not. But I started incorrect. I started this magic number generator. I need to start travel money saver. Okay. Let's see whether this works. I want to go to Bali. It will cost me 3000. Okay. I have 2000 this month. I have collected. I have 500 the next month. I have collected 2500. 
I have 700 the next month. I collected totally 3200. So I'm going to Bali. Going to Bali, I don't have this uh, exclamation mark. But I continue. I want to go to Mexico. It will cost me 5000. I have 2700 the first month and I have 2300 the second month. So I collected exactly what I need, 5000, and I go to Mexico. Oh, this should be printed with two. Uh, it should be like this percent dot to F uh, slash N. And this should be print F. Okay. Finally, I print end, and this will stop. Now, with the fixes. Let's see whether this works better than the previous one. I want to go to Sofia. It will take me 2000. I have 1,000. 1. I have collected 350.50. Okay. And now I collected more 250. Now I have enough money to go to Sofia. I start from zero. I want to go to London. It will take me 500. Depends on where I live, of course. I have 2000. And this is enough to go to London. And it works. If I start from end at the beginning, it will directly stop the program. So I have solved correctly this program let's see what happens here ha wow not destination which is please read the next one check whether it's end and if it's not do this loop this is a kind of short shorter way to implement these three lines i'll show you i'll need this and wow this is not equal to end. Do the following. But this will not work. First, because this is not correct. I should say equals end. And I should say the opposite. Okay. But I cannot declare this here, so I need to declare it separately and say this. But it should be like this. Scanner dot next one. Okay, so please read the next one. Take the result. Check whether it's end. Wow, it's not end. The next one. Please do this. It's a more hacker style uh, way to implement this, but it's correct and you may see it in your practice because it's very popular in the Java world to have this combination of reading the next fellow and checking it for some some other value. I'll try again. I want to go to Pali. It will cost me 3000. I have 2500. I have more 499. I have 0 0.5 <laughs> and I have 0 0.5 and finally I reached 3000 and I'm going to Bali. I want to go to Sofia. It will cost 1000. I have one 1200 it's enough i'm going to sofia and buy exactly the same way it runs but we use this construction so we read the needed sum we start from collected sum zero and while the 
collected some is less than a read it some we take the next one and add the money the saved money and we print how many money we have collected after we have collected all the money for a certain destination we print we are going to this destination and that's all the next number is called prime uh, the next problem is called prime numbers it's about writing a program to print all prime numbers in given range so we have given range for example from 5 to 50 these are the prime numbers in this range 5 7 11 13 all these are prime numbers so we need to have a loop from start number until the end number and inside the loop if num is prime then print the number this is not a code this is loop for num equals to this range okay but this is the idea that we can use just have a loop and for each number within the range, check whether it's prime or not. If the range is 20 to 30, this is 23 and 29 is the result. Okay, so let's create a new class called prime numbers in range. It's good enough as a name. What does this class? It's finds the prime numbers in given range. So this answers the question. I will again take this scanner and from the scanner I will read int start number equals to scanner dot ne next int int and number equals to scanner dot next int and I'll have four whoop for number is from start number until end number and now print the number and this now this will print all the numbers from for example 50 to 100 but I need to print only the prime numbers so I will change this a little bit boolean is prime is true each number is prime until proven the opposite I will need a for loop for the divider divider which will start from 2 until the mat dot s squared t of num why because if we have a divider if the number num is equal a multiplied by p it will be for sure that a is less than or equal to square of num or p will be less than or equal to the square root of num if both are less than this the multiplication will not be true so we have already solved this problem how to check whether a number is prime a number is prime if it doesn't have uh, divisors it can be divided only by one and by itself it doesn't have dividers which are in the range from two until the uh, up to square root of num so if the divider divides num if we have a divider some divider for example 5 which divides num this means that is prime is false and we don't need to continue this whoop 
so we can break. Otherwise, after the loop, if the number is still prime, we print it. And that's the entire solution. Okay, so we have a loop from the start number until the end number. For each number, we assume the number is prime. We try to find dividers, 2, 3, 4, 5, until the square root of num. For example, if num is 100, the square root of num will be 10. So we'll try 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, and 10. And if this divider divides num without a reminder, this means that this number is not prime by definition. So we stop the loop and we skip printing this because this will be false. Otherwise, if this loop checks all possible dividers and none of them divides num, then num will be prime. This will be true and it will be printed. Let's check whether it works correctly. From 1 to 20 works correctly, but it's one is not prime so uh, if we start from minus 10 to 20 these numbers are not prime so I need the prime is prime I need another if if it should start from max mat dot max of two and start num. The bigger of two and start number. It should start from two if the number is not enough. So if we start from minus 10 until 20. These are the prime numbers. By definition, a, a number which is less than 2 cannot be prime. The smallest prime number is 2. Negative numbers cannot be prime, by definition, from the math. Okay? If we start from 100 until 200, these are the prime numbers. And this works correctly. If we have from 20 to 30, these are the prime numbers. This works completely well if from 20 to minus 20. This is an empty range. There are no prime numbers. From 25 until 25, there are no prime numbers because there is only one number here, 25, which is composite. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. That's not prime. Okay? So, this is the solution and we can go ahead. This is the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. We have start and end. We make a loop from start to end. And we assume the prime. And we start from divider 2. Aha! We... Okay. We start from divider 2 and we have max divider, which is uh, at square root of num. And while the divider is less than max divider, if the divider divides num, it's not prime, we break, otherwise we increase the divider. This might be done with a for loop from, from 2 until the, uh, from 2 until mat.s squared t of num. So this inner loop might be different but this works also very well and finally if the current number is prime we print it and we go after that for the next number for example if the current number is 5 the next here will be 6 and this logic will repeat for 6 we are done with this problem so let's go ahead with the next one the next one is called unique pin codes. It's about generating unique pin codes, which consists of 
three uh, of three digits okay the first is in the range one to max one the second is in the range one to max two and the third is in the range one to max three the first and the third should be even and the second should be a prime number but if it is a digit it's from zero to nine okay because it's digit single digit what are the prime numbers in this range it's there are two or three or five or seven there are no other numbers which are single digits and prime in the same time so we need to have one number d1 followed by a second number d2 followed by a third number d3 and this and this should be even even and this should be even and this d2 should be one of these numbers so we need to have three nested loops from one to max one from one to max two and from one to max three and we need to check whether the first is even the second is two three five or seven and the final d3 is even number okay so we print we want to print the pink codes in an increased order if we have three five five this digit starts from one to three and it should be even which the only possibility is two the final digit is two or four because it should be in the range up to five and the second is in the range up to five so it should be either two or three or five so these are the this is the output and this is the explanation okay let's solve this problem and i'll create a new java class unique pin codes unique pin codes generator i'll create a unique pin codes generator which will hold my main method it will have something like this but i'll need max 1 max 2 and max 3 and i'll need a for i which starts from it should be even so it should start from uh it should be digit 1 from 2 until from 2 until max 1 with step 2 okay the second should be the second di digit d2 it should start from 2 until inclusively max 2 and if d2 is 2 or d2 is 3 or the second digit is 5 or the second digit is 7 10 it's even is prime sorry finally i'll need another for loop which is the last digit d3 which starts from 2 until max 3 this is max 2 with plus equal to okay this is d1 the first loop from 2 from 2 until max 1 with step 2 which means even numbers the second from 2 until max 2 and then we check for 2 3 5 or 7 so we have d2 which is prime the third one 
from 2 to max 3 with step 2. And finally, we need to print these digits together. We have empty string, then we append the first digit to this string, then the second digit to this string, then the first digit to this string, and we are ready. Let's test whether this works correctly. 355 should print 6 uh, pin codes as output. 355. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Works correctly. I can check also 999. These are all possible unique pin codes within this range and this should not be bigger than 9 because we know that this d1 d2 and d3 are digits so they should be in the range from 0 to 9 because that's how digits work okay so we are ready with this problem and we can go ahead this is the way we solve this d1 from 2 to max 1 with step 2, d2 from 2 to max 2 with if and d3 is in this range and we can check for d2 like this and print. It's very similar to what I had in mind and what I already implemented for you a few minutes ago. The next problem is called letters combinations. Okay, we want to write a program which generates all three letter combinations under the certain condition. We have a start letter, end letter, and excluded letter. We want to print all combination in the range from start to the end, excluding x, and finally print their count. For example, the start letter uh, might be, for example, sorry. Uh, it might be, uh, for example, C. Okay, it might be C. The end letter might be, for example, F. So we have these letters in the range uh, C, sorry, C. D, E, F. And we have... Ah! Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we have from C until F excluding, for example, D. So we have C, D, E, F but without D because it's included. So this is the start letter, this is the end letter, and this T is excluded letter. And we have this letter C, E, F, and we want to have three letters combinations. For example, C, C, C. Another example is E, C, F or C, F, F. These are all valid combinations of three letters among this set. Okay? This is an example. If we have from A to C but without B, this means that using only the letters A and C, print me all combinations of three letters. And they are totally 8. This is the count of these combinations. How many are they in total? Okay, so I will create a new project. And a new Java class. Letters combinations. Three letters combinations. Okay. And I will put the main method and we'll take this because this will help me to save some time. 
So I have char letter one, the first letter, which will be next. I don't have next char, so I'll have the next one, but I'll take the uh, the first letter of it because next one will return string for example Peter or hello but I take the first letter for example P or H okay so I have a start letter then end letter and then excluded letter and I'll have for loop letter starting from star start letter until letter reaches the end letter okay oh but it's not letter it should be L1 because this is the first letter and I'll have inside if the first letter is not the excluded letter then I'll have second letter L2 from the start to the end and again if L2 is not the excluded letter, I'll have a for loop for L3. Okay. And again, if L3 is not the excluded letter, then I'll print these three letters. The em empty string append the first letter, append the second letter, append the third letter, ok, then append empty space and increment the counter which will start from zero at the beginning and counter is zero and finally after all these whoops which and here we can check after all these loops we print the counter which starts from zero it should be something like this we iterate from start letter until end letter running excluding the excluded letter then for l3 to the same for L3 the same and inside we print all of this let's see whether this works correctly or not please print all letters starting from A until C excluding P ha ah, this doesn't work well why because this is int it should be char it should be character it should be character. It works correctly, but this print A97 it is A98 is C is P or I'm not sure, but let's check. I want all letters from A to C without B. I have B here. Why? Because this is not checked correctly. I should check L1, L2, and L3 for the excluded letter. Let's check again A to C without B. Oh, works absolutely correctly. <laughs> I can optimize this a little bit. I will optimize this for code size but we'll see I just combine the checks on a single check and this
I can do like this. I just use, oh, this is incorrectly, Shift F6 with double T, not triple T. I run the first loop from start letter to the end letter, the second loop from start letter to the end letter, the third loop from, from the start letter to the end letter, and then I check all of these three letters, whether they are different than the excluded letter, and I print if it is true. Let's run this. And check whether A to C without B. Okay. Looks that this works correctly. And let's have another example from A to Z without X. Oh, a lot of combinations are out there. 15,000. Okay. Let's go ahead with the next, with the solution I had in mind. Start at X. I have three nested loops and I check whether the first, second and the third are different than the excluded letter and I print and include, increase the counter. Finally, I print the counter. Exactly the same solution which I already had in mind. Okay. The next problem is called happy numbers. It's about writing a program to generate all four digit happy numbers. D1, D2, D3, D4, for given integer n, such that the first two digits, their sum is equal to the second two digits, which are equal to n. So this is an example. If we have three, we may have the first two digits, one plus two, this is three. Zero plus three, this is also three, okay? So, this 2 should be equal to this 2, should be equal to this. So, if we have a loop for the first digit, it should be from 1 to 9, because it cannot be 0. Otherwise, it will be not 4-digit number, it will be 3-digit number. Later, we have this. It should be from 0 to 9. Okay, the next should also be from 0 to 9, and the next should also be from 0 to 9, and then I can have some checks here for these digits. This is another example. Let's solve this. It's very easy. It needs four nested loops, but it's very easy. Happy numbers. Okay, I'll create the main method. Then I'll take this number and maybe from this the number n and I'll have a for for whoop from digit one from one until nine ten for the second digit from 0 until 9 and now if d1 plus d2 equals n I, I can continue if I don't even need these brackets because I have single statement after each for or if if I have this I will continue, otherwise I don't need to, to um, iterate for the other loops because it's meaningful. So I'll have the other two, D3 from 1, uh, from sorry, from 0 to 9, the, the third digit, it is D3, 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 and D4 is from 0 until 9, and if D3 plus D4 equals n, then I need to print what I need to print, the number and spaces. 
So I will print, I don't mean this. Okay, I will print something like empty plus d1 plus d2 plus the third digit plus the, the fourth digit plus some space. I think that's all. And hmm, maybe I need to put the code like this to be more readable, but let's check whether this works for three i should have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve four ah uh, let's check i have this here which is not needed so this corresponds to this it's correct now the brackets are closed correctly and i'll try again for 3, I need to have 12 happy numbers. Okay, uh, it should be print without ln. Let's try again. For 3, I should have 12 happy numbers. 12 happy numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is 3, this is 3. This is 3, this is 3, okay, if I have 12, there are quite more. Works correctly, so we are done with this project, with this problem. It is exactly the same solution. The first digit is from 1 to 9. It cannot be 0 because it's the starting digit. The others can be from 0 to 9. I check the first two digits, then I try the next in the nested loop, the third and the fourth digit, and I check whether they are correct. And finally, I print the result, the next happy number, if I have it. So, this is very similar to my solution. Okay, this was the last problem from your exercises and homeworks. So, let's summarize what we have learned today in this lesson. Uh, we learned that for loops can use different steps, like step of 2, i plus equal to, or the step might, can be that we multiply the current number two by 2 and take, and that we get the next number, or we can even multiply the current number by itself. So this will generate something like 2, then uh, or, for example, 3, then 9, then 81, etc. If i starts from 3, which is very interesting. So, we may have any formula which transforms certain number to the next number in the loop. Uh, okay. In Later we will learn today that we can nest whoops one inside another. We can have a, uh, we can repeat a piece of code which also holds something which repeats a piece of code. We can iterate through all the rows in a table and for each row we can iterate through all the columns in the current row. For example, nested whoops are used when we process tabular data, process data by rows and each row is processed by counts. Nested loops, while well, loops can be used when we have repeating logic with nested repeating logic with some exit conditions like we read numbers until we reach end and for each number we do something which requires a nested loop. So it is easy to understand the concept behind the nested loops. It's more complex to solve the problems which we may uh, solve using nested loops because they require combining loops with nesting loops, with if, with complex if statements, uh, with variables, expressions. Everything we have learned until today from our training course is combined as knowledge, as skills in the current lesson. So 
if you are very good in the current lesson, this assumes that you know very well the entire training course. And the most complex problems at the exam from this uh, training course will come from this lesson. So be sure that if you want to become a skillful software engineer, that you learn how to use nested loops combined with some ifs and more complex logic in order to solve problems like the examples we had today. Did you like this Java Basics free programming course? Do you want more? If you are serious about programming, you will need to learn 10 to 15 times more concepts, coding techniques and software technologies and spend a lot more time and effort on hands-on exercises and practical projects to reach a junior job position in the IT industry. That's the reality. If someone says that a beginner can learn programming and start a job in three to five months, don't believe him. This is unlikely to happen. You better study slowly and thoroughly. The effort will pay off. This is how it works. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video courses on computer programming and software engineering and software technologies, practical tutorials and code lessons. Join the learners community at softuni.org to get free access to the practical exercises and the automated judge system from this course. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. Join now softuni.org